Live. It's the Bob and Tom Show. This is, uh, this ain't a new song, but it seems like it ought to be. It seems, it's about, uh, a hero of mine. Hey, little buddy, don't even worry. Everything is gonna be okay. I should have told you when you made all that money that the world would do you this way. Forget your ex-wife, she ain't no good for you. She's a gold digging bitch, and her mother is too. Hey, Iron Mike, <laughs> don't let them get you down. <laughs> hey, little buddy, don't even worry. You keep your eyes fixed on the fight. Don King ain't the kind of cat who'd steal somebody's money. Hell, he always does everybody right. <laughs> You're still the champ, and we all know you are. You've got to leave the women alone, Mike, but you can smash up as many cars as you want to, Iron Mike. <laughs> Don't let them get you down. <laughs> hey, little buddy. Don't you get angry. God, please, at least not at me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right behind you all the way. Oh, compadre, you just say whatever you want and I'll agree. I'll wash every car in your 10-car garage. I'd be glad to carry the boombox in your entourage. Hey, Iron Mike. Don't let them get you down. Hey, little buddy. Come out and flow me a 20. <laughs> That's an omen. Yeah. That's an omen, baby. Oh, yeah. Good morning and welcome to the Bob and Tom Show. Uh, we'll explain why we uh, played a little bit of Todd Snyder of Mike Tyson here in a second. Hello, Christy. Hi, Chick. She's over there at the news desk. Yeah, There's I am. Pat Godwood. Hello, Chick. He's in the performance room. Pat and I, if, uh, Pat, we've had a quick meeting already this morning, and we understood each other. We remembered what the other one said, and we've moved forward. Oh, that's nice. It's quite the meeting. There's Josh Arnold. It's not how things work around here. <laughs> yeah. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. And Willie Griswold's here. Hey, everybody. Good that's to see right. you guys. Federal law mandates we have to have a Griswold on the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tom is, uh, <laughs> where is it? We don't know where he is. Or are we he's, saying where he is? He's taking a day off. He's taking a day off. He's on assignment, there you as go. we say, around around the old Hopefully radio. He's having range. fun. Yeah, yeah, evidently. Yeah, I hope. Yeah. I can't ski. Can't ski a lick. I can't <laughs> ski. I can't skate. I can't. Uh, ice skate or roller skate can't really do it. have you never ever been able to no nope. I, I i can ride a bike that's about it oh huh. yeah huh. can you do all that well you <laughs> don't water ski i know that yeah and i've never tried uh, the snow skiing yeah but yeah skating i can do no kidding yeah uh, oddly yes like a hockey like uh, well enough to play hockey or something uh no no okay. as i said i i when I say oddly, I mean oh. I skate very oddly. Oh, you look odd doing it. <laughs> no, no, I uh, I'm better than you might think, but right. I'm not I'm not very good. Except I don't get ice skating at all. I just fall and I hit my rear end, mm. and then I and then ice skating is supposed to be such a merry fun time when you do it in the holidays. Yeah, there needs to be a practice session for fat idiots like me <laughs> who fall and slip, and then their little sisters make fun of them, say, "Oh, look, Willie can't skate. Look at Willie can't skate. He's on the floor again." <laughs> ah, the holidays. Yeah. <laughs> merry should, Christmas. They should have dating skating where they have a like a, just a quick little lesson so you can at least get through a date on ice skates because that's big. That's, during the holidays. that's great. They should yeah. have dating skating. Did you dating say 
say skating. dating, skating? Yes. That's a great idea. Yeah. Dating, skating leads to mating. That's right. Oh, oh well. And yeah, this every sells itself. good That's rom-com <laughs> in the winter has skating. I'll tell you what, I'll give you... That'd uh, be their meat cute. 50 grand for 30, I want 30%. 30% of yeah. the dating, mating? Dating, mm-hmm. skating, mating? Yeah, skating, yeah. mating. Skating, <laughs> mating. And a royalty, a dollar royalty until I get my money back. <laughs> Always Mr. Royalty. Why am I watching Shark Tank every week? I love it. Did I say Shark Tank? No, you said Shark Tank. That's a whole other show. Yeah, that's a whole different show. Uh, Anyway, we played uh, Mike Tyson because, uh, yes, he's coming back to fight, evidently. What? Uh, Big news this morning. Mike Tyson is going to fight Jake Paul. Oh, my goodness. On July 20th, and it will be streamed live on Netflix. For those who don't know, who is Jake Paul? He's the internet star, wouldn't you say? Yeah, he's like, he used to be kind of a Disney star, and then he kind of broke out on his own with YouTube. Okay. Lately, he's been getting in boxing matches. And his brother's Logan? Logan, and he's the guy, he has the Prime, the Gatorade-like energy drink that all the children love. Uh It's been crazy about the Prime, you guys. So they love the Pauls, the kids. Mm -hmm. The The children love the Pauls. Is Logan more... More famous than Jake? Uh, I'm not sure. The Paul fat, the fame uh, factor. I don't know who's more famous. Jake, Jake is more is. controversial Jake is? Oh. for sure. He gets he gets a little more. Uh, he's fighting Mike Tyson, okay. which seems like a bad thing to do because if you lose, you lose to Mike Tyson. Either if you if you win, people are like, oh you just beat up an old guy. Right. But if you lose, you, Mike Tyson beats you up on TV. Yeah. No win. Have you seen Mike Tyson, the video of him working out? Yeah, it's uh, insane. It's <laughs> great. It's crazy. Yeah. How old, what's the age difference? Uh, he's fi- Mike's 57 and... Uh, Jake is... I don't know. He'll be 58 when the fight happens, but yeah, and Logan Paul is 27. Jake Paul. Ooh. Jake Paul. Okay. Jake Paul. Oh, wow. 30 year difference. Logan. Didn't Tyson just... <laughs> <laughs> Logan, I need to make a boom boom. Jeez, oh, I just changed you, Doctor. Wow, Doctor X is tired this morning. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you guys remember the NFL playoffs? They didn't happen that long ago. Remember this? Sure. Uh, Kansas City Chiefs advance, win the Super Bowl. Yeah. Well, there was a game between the Chiefs and the uh, Miami Dolphins at Arrowhead. Remember this? In the playoffs, it was four below. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Evidently... Some of the people who showed up and was at, or they were at that game, they are being uh, told they probably need to have amputations because of frostbite. No. What? We'll have oh that my story gosh. coming up. Talk about gosh. something oh. to look forward to. Oh, the story what? and uh, there's no mention of specific body parts, but the mind goes... I, I mean, you just run rampant. Any extremity, really. <laughs> the, the what are we doing? Do we want to watch the football game? We want toes. We <laughs> yeah. can't have everything in this I world, mean, everybody. I'm a fan, and I'd be excited if my team was in the playoffs, but uh, I don't think I'd give my right arm for the team. No, no. Gosh, no. no, and this no, is, no. I don't think that's... Uh, no. 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 <laughs> Why would you do that? Uh, several Chiefs fans who suffered frostbite during the cold playoff game now need an amputation. Oh, just several. <laughs> they got frostbite. Uh, it was four below, a wind chill of 27 below. Of the 70% of patients with frostbite, they're now being referred for amputation. Oh. I mean, I know those playoff tickets can cost an arm and a leg, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> What do you think, huh? Uh, One woman got frostbite. She took her gloves off for just five minutes to put up a tent in the parking lot outside Arrowhead. Oh, man. man. Uh, They are undergoing treatment in uh, hyperbaric oxygen. Oh, like my cat. My cat had oxygen uh, hyperbaric chamber, right? Mike Mike Jackson. 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 Yeah. Jocko. Weirdo. He he would get in there. (laughs) Yeah, that's him. (laughs) He got a good night's sleep, though, that guy. He did. Uh. Are you telling me that if you <laughs> if you could, you wouldn't go, hey, Doc, come on, I am, uh, it's delicious. time for Chicky to go Betty Bye. <laughs> I, I long to make so much money that I have an evil doctor who does whatever I want. Because you always hear these stories. How do you get that much money? 
Yeah. Because yeah. you can't pull out your Blue Cross Blue Shield and say, hey, give me the good stuff, Doc. Right. right. You gotta have that crazy evil guy health insurance. Stop messing around. <laughs> give me the goodies. Come on. <laughs> and you get a driver, wouldn't you? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'd have a driver. Are you Ab kidding? Absolutely. Josh, what? you want to be my driver? Would that be awkward? No. No, yeah, I could be your driver. <laughs> Would you sit in the passenger seat or in the back? I'd sit in the back. Would you, even like, if Josh were driving? Like Joan Crawford, signing pictures. Is <laughs> can I have one of those driver's caps? Absolutely. Uh, All right. You can have whatever you want, man. You're driver Josh. <laughs> <laughs> that the the car is your domain. What no matter what you say goes in that car. You're the boss. Oh, really? I yeah. mean that now. Yeah. You, you know what? I'll music? treat you. You'll still be. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't, this uh, is gonna last. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't I don't know about the music. <laughs> right, right. That's where it'll all fall apart. Yeah. Oh, He's just playing <laughs> the Hagar hailing stuff and hailing stuff. No, it's right. No. Psychosocial. Psychosocial. You get a playlist just for chick, and every song starts with, "Are you ready to rock?" <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Who's ready? I'm not ready. Give us ten. <laughs> okay. uh, you got anything over there coming up in news, Christy? I have a story for you. Chick All about right. the um, Tower of London. I know uh, how much you love the Tower of London you know, and not e a, everything in England. It's and not a tower. You know that? What well, is it? More of a fortress. It's a sprawling uh, fortress. Yeah. Yes. And they have ravens there. Yes. That's the story. Really smart ravens. I Big. Have, that's exactly what I'm going to talk about. And they're genetically, from like hundreds of years, they're... Is oh. this the story? I hope not. Their heritage. Kind the of. Are, yeah, the ravens have, the, the fam, this one family of ravens have been working at the tower forever. Yeah. We have a new raven master. Did you tease the beef eaters when you went? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you got to poke them. You gotta, they kind of host the, uh, or anybody have any questions? Like that. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, they kind of host. Put a little feather under their nose. That'd be good for you. Maybe you could go host a Tower of London. And I, I welcome everybody. <laughs> I think I'd like that. I don't like, I do get in trouble with British people. Sometimes I call them dirty redcoats. I'm still kind of not oh. over oh. the Revolutionary War. I don't blame you. Yeah, so maybe I'll do it. Maybe I won't. I can I can <laughs> see that being a good gig for me. <laughs> hey, we, we, we were at war. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were. People forget that. Taxation, no representation. Not on my watch, Playboy. <laughs> watch it, pal. Mm -hmm. uh, sports and uh, news coming up. But, uh, Christy, don't you have something to uh, tell us? Oh, I sure do, yes, Chick. About, Thank uh, you very much. You're welcome. Uh, so many of us spend our lives wishing we had more time. Time for what? Well, if you had an extra hour in your day, how would you use it? Well, I have a great way for you. Time! Yes, you could make yourself a priority and get therapy. That's right. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it. It could be helpful for learning how to set healthy boundaries. We all need those. Learn positive coping skills, empowering you to be the best version of yourself. Well, if you're thinking of starting therapy, take that hour and give BetterHelp a try. It's all done online, designed to be convenient, flexible. Just fill out this brief questionnaire and you will be matched with a licensed therapist. And here's the thing. Don't like that therapist? Well, you can switch at any time for no additional charge. BetterHelp. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash BTS show today and you'll get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H E L P.com slash BT show. Coming up, uh, Mike Tyson, Jake Paul, as we referred to earlier, and also. Uh, um, we have Kevin Bacon in the news. Kev oh, six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Yeah, we have a new Raven Master. And Tom Brady and Jizzy back in the news. Oh, yeah, she was crying. A Did little bit. It? Yeah, she's oh, upset. Yeah. She's crying. Poor thing. <laughs> Krista could be uh, happier about it. So. <laughs> she's crying. I, wasn't, I felt bad for her. Oh, it's, it's just women the video? Just watching a show called Supermodels Cry. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? Uh, but are you uh, hungry? Kitty, Kitty has claws. <laughs> yeah. You think she's ever eaten a ho ho or a ding dong? No. 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 Yeah, probably not. Gosh. That's a sad existence. Isn't it? Mm. Yeah. We'll be right back. This is the Bob and Tom Show. You're listening to Bob and Tom.
Hey, hi, I'm Tom, this is Chick, that's Josh, and this is Christy Lee. Christy, what's happening? Hey, Charleston, the Bob and Tom Show here and our friends at Rock 105 WKLC are bringing us to town for a live show with special guests. Duke Tomato and the Bob and Tom Brassamouth Horns Plus. Do not miss an amazing comedy show that night. That's right, it all happens Friday, April 5th at the Charleston Coliseum and Convention Center. If you're listening anywhere within 100 miles of Charleston or Deacon, Come out and see us live on the morning of April 5th. That's a free show. And then get tickets for that night's Bob and Tom Show comedy tour event with who, Christy? Pat Godwin, Josh Arnold, Jeff Oske, Willie Griswold. All hosted by Tom and Christy. Aww. Tickets on sale now, and they're going fast. Get your tickets at Ticketmaster.com or the Charleston Coliseum box office. See, see you there! there. Parents, if you have kids and you have the minivan, make sure there's at least two TV screens in the back of that minivan because, God forbid, your child might be forced to use their imagination for 20 minutes on the way to elementary school in order to keep them busy. I say much better. Every single moment be spoon-fed by the video god that runs their life. Gee, I wonder where ADD comes from. <laughs> I can't possibly imagine. I mean, we kept the boy entertained 24 hours a day his entire childhood in front of a television with a remote control and a game console. All of a sudden, he can't pay attention. <laughs> oh, oh, great Zeus. Why have you done this to our child? Please. Send um, down some of your pharmaceuticals as uh, which to cure the lad. <laughs> Otherwise, we might be forced to spend time with him, and uh -huh. frankly, he's kind of an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and while you're at it, send me something for my fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome and myriad of other ailments the medical community has convinced me that I have because as an American, if I don't feel good 24 hours a day, well, there must be a pill I can pop into my face and change my brain chemistry to constantly feel better. Or maybe, and I'm just spitballing here, oh great one, maybe you're not supposed to feel good all the time. Maybe it's supposed to be a struggle to get out of bed every once in a while, <laughs> and in doing that, it's how you become a better person. When you hurdle that part of your life, uh -huh. then you just create this incredible sense of entitlement, which is what I complain about the rest of the world having. Maybe this ADD thing is kind of overblown. Maybe it's supposed to be harder to read something than it is to watch it on TV, and we have these big, fat, drug-addicted kids that are basically embracing all the worst parts of Elvis Presley. <laughs> We're not doing them any favors. Maybe, maybe, oh great one, the rest of the world isn't the problem. Maybe it's me. Yeah. By the way, that, that is entitled Parenting Advice from a Guy That's Never Had Kids. <laughs> Hey, it's Josh Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven-baked cheese. It arrives pre-baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skillet, or air fry it. Check out their new oven-baked cheese flavor, jalapeno. Ooey, gooey, spicy cheese. It's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat. Perfect for game day, parties, or any time. Excuse me, are, um, are you serious with this? I mean, why are you doing this? Me, uh, the real me is right here. I could easily be doing this. We, we don't need you, man. I, uh, look, there's only room for one of us. That's Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese Jalapeno Flavored Oven Baked Cheese. It's now available in Gardner's Oven Baked Bundle Package, so try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh, me the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you. Sorry to hear about that. It's okay. Lots of people get divorced. Um, Einstein got divorced.
He did. Hey. Yeah, did you know that? Albert Einstein, arguably the most intelligent man who ever lived, got divorced. They should tell you that before you get married. <laughs> It shouldn't be, do you love her? Do you want to spend the rest of your life with her? It should be, do you think you're smarter than Einstein? <laughs> oh, so you're dating then? Uh, I guess. You know what I don't want to do? I don't want to say I love you anymore. I hate that first <laughs> I love you. That's the worst. First time you ever tell a woman you love her. If they like you, they want to hear it. And when they hear it that first time, something comes over them. You know, their eyes get all wide. and Get that diabolical grin on their face. You, you can almost feel them saying... Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Morning laughter <laughs> just might be the best medicine. No matter how hard I try, can't keep my hands off my feet. <laughs> Bob and Tom Radio. <laughs> Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. <laughs> Tom taking a vacation day. Good for him. We're all sitting around, hanging out. Kevin Neal is going to be our guest this morning. And also, news you failed to mention with uh, Mr. Oski. And we have an email, especially for Josh. And Christy, I need you to get on this. What? Um, there evidently is an amusement park um, that is tailored around Little Debbie snack food. Oh, yeah? And it's... They have all these different rides and uh, uh, toys you can climb on. Huh. And it's somewhere in Tennessee. How about that? They and got the the, I, the uh, Christmas cake, <coughs> and they have an oatmeal pie. The Mary Cosmic Girl. Brownie. College yeah. Dale, oh. Tennessee. College Dale, Tennessee. Sweetest park in Tennessee. <laughs> How about that? How now, about that? This isn't me tell it, bringing this to your attention, Josh. This is some guy named Steve. Oh, okay. I'm sure, though, he tells, he hears Tom talk to you about snacks and things. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's oh. just letting me know. <laughs> and they All do right. have a statue of Little Debbie. Well, they'd have to. They'd have to have an oatmeal cream pie, too. Those are the best. They still have that statue of Little Debbie up? After yeah. all the letters I sent saying, tear <laughs> that thing down. We don't need that in our town anymore. Little oh. Debbie statue must come to. Didn't you say one morning Little Debbie must have been real fat? <laughs> I don't remember saying. I probably did. I think that. Uh, I but think I, that was isn't there a picture on the products? Hmm. Uh, yeah, the Ten Acre Park has been in the making for five years after the land was donated <laughs> to the city. There's you can see bottom, little uh, Debbie. You can see the Christmas cake, the oatmeal right. cream pie. She looks sort of depression era just because she's like bronze. <laughs> so she just looks That's like true. she's covered in soot and She dust looks like a life, size, a life size Monopoly piece. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a little bit. She, she's looking at the plate of dinner for the whole town, but they're just oh. letting her hold it really quick before everyone oh, eats it. Gosh. Oh, I wish I could remember, but I saw a recipe somewhere on Instagram where they took the those um, peanut butter, what are those called? The long sticks? The nutter butters or whatever. The, the, uh, peanut butter fingers is what the I'm nutter butters or Yeah, whatever. nutter oh, butter, I yeah. used to live on those in high school. That was my lunch. But they made a cake out of them. Yeah. Oh, it looked so good. <laughs> so Slam your hands on the desk good. So good. Wow. <laughs> I think I saved that recipe. I don't think I've ever seen you act that way about any, anything I know, food sweet. related. I know, right? And I saw... Nutter, uh, vanilla wafers, um, banana pudding, like walking tacos. You can make them into like a, a little, you take the little <laughs> uh, vanilla wafer bags and put banana pudding and whipped cream on them and, and slice bananas. And you want this. Oh, how the good woman is who that? one time I walked in and you your <laughs> snack one morning was two raisinets on a piece of paper. <laughs> you want this. Now. Well, I just, that's one of my favorites. And you eat, yeah, a, that you eat a, famously, you eat a sector of a Kit Kat bar a day. Yes. It'll last you four, four days. days. That's right. <laughs> Who would have thought? I you? one teeny tiny peanut butter cup every night. Dark chocolate. By the way, for those of you listening. Uh, All dentists recommend that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you lay there every in your bed with chocolate. Uh, after dinner is my after dinner sweet. Oh, oh. Uh, Christy is uh, dressed today. Uh, she has her uh, sport coat on. That's right. The sport coat that is uh, normally uh, on a ventriloquist dummy. <laughs> she's, she's oh, that's wearing... right. I forgot. That's what you said. And Willie, uh, yeah. Willie made a big deal of it. He goes, wow, you look really great today, Chrissy. And I meant it. She does look really Thank nice. You. But but also, she also looks like a very nice couch, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. The little yeah. buttons that are on there. Yeah. It's quite, it looks very nice, though. I'm not trying to be mean, but we can be. I don't care. You walk into this building, you get a little bit mean. It happens. We have armor. Put up your armor. Thank you. Uh, this just in, the NFL scouting combine uh, set a record as more, more than 27,000 fans attended 
the uh, fan-centric celebration in Indianapolis between February 29th and March 3rd. Uh, took uh, place four days of the NFL Combine. Combine experience, the NFL's free interactive fan fest, returned to Lucas Oil uh, and uh, the Combine experience where fans were encouraged to wear their favorite NFL team gear, take photos with the Colts Super Bowl uh, trophy, uh, view all 57 Super Bowl rings up close, and participate in interactive games. I think you could carry the ball. They had like a rubber band they put around you, and you could see how far you could get running, oh, running the ball. And that's fun. Trying to pull yeah. you down. And then they had a target you could throw a football through. But it just set a record. And I told you I was watching a, a terrifying amount of the combine. I was concerned for myself. <laughs> and, You're excited. Uh, Did you looked, think about going down there at all? No. Oh. But it looked uh, really, uh, really full in the yeah. stadium. I, you, I, you, you're going to want to steer clear of those NFL experience things. I did one of those. I thought I was having fun. I made a field goal. Yeah. Great oh, time nice. for everybody. All right. And then I lost. I did a 40-yard dash, and I lost to like a 13-year-old who was kind of chubby. And I'm not going to be able to recover from that for weeks, <laughs> you guys. It's brutal. <laughs> Physically or? It was so, I had to pull my pants up halfway through. <laughs> they were falling down. <laughs> Noah got video of the whole thing. Just terrible. Aww. Do you guys know that uh, there's an episode of Atlanta that covered this with Donald Glover? Mm -hmm. And it's Great on show. FX. A really good show. Uh, that Michael Vick, former NFL quarterback, would go and hustle 40-yard dashes or hustle races with people. Oh, what? really? He would bet them money that I they he could beat them in a race. And he always could. Even after he retired, he was... Faster than some guy standing in a parking lot. Well, do people know who he was? No. Oh, they yeah. really didn't sort yeah. of catch on. That's until. not fair. Well, to be fair, his face isn't on ESPN all the time. So that's true. Yeah. It makes sense. People yeah. don't know who he is. Not, not anymore. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, and this is official. Apparently, on July 20th, Mike Tyson and Jake Paul are going to be in a boxing match streaming live on Netflix. Uh, Netflix will provide live coverage between the 27-year-old social media star hyphen turned hyphen boxer and the 57-year-old former heavyweight champion of the world, formerly baddest man on the planet. This is really smart for Netflix to do this. Yeah. Uh, People are, we're already, we're buzzing here talking about this. You guys are excited about Behind it? Behind the scenes, yeah. I found it an odd location in Dallas, 100,000 seat oh, stadium. Oh, at AT&T Stadium is where they're going to have Wow. It. And, yeah. uh, you know, normally Vegas, L.A., New York. Well. Jerry, Jerry World. Uh, Tyson has not fought since he talk on, uh, took on uh, Roy Jones Jr. in an exhibition in 2020. Uh, I don't think that one ended in any sort of decision. I think I that remember. was a non-decision. And uh, Paul has won nine out of ten fights, six knockouts against uh, mostly, as it says here, undistinguished opponents, mm. including several mixed martial artists and uh, someone else who makes their living on YouTube, oh, as, okay. as Paul does. Uh, Paul had his second pro bout on the undercard of Tyson Jones. Uh, he knocked out former... NBA player Nate Robinson, mm -hmm. mm. which which was very funny. It's very funny to watch athletes that aren't boxers <laughs> pretending to be boxers. Uh. It's a really good time. And his only loss came last year to Tommy Fury. That's the uh, less accomplished half brother of the WBC heavyweight champion Tyson Fury. I did not know the Furies were brothers, mm -hmm. like the craze, Josh. See, yeah, they're, they're <laughs> brothers. I had no idea. I know a lot about this because Netflix, the Untold series, which uh -huh. I love, they did a. Oh, that is a good. They series. did a piece about Malice at the Palace, and it's, it's, I, I watched a whole thing about Jake Paul. Truly, if you have good music in the background of a documentary, I'll watch just about anything. So I know a lot about Jake Paul. So that, hey. the, the, the Jordan <laughs> thing, The Last Dance, that thing, the, oh, the music so in that is yeah. so great. That's why Netflix is so smart here. They're going to get uh, an audience of Willie's age, and they're going to get... Uh, uh, Grandpa right here. Yeah, to watch Tyson. And, yeah. I mean, it's, it's really smart because half of America wants to watch Jake Paul, and the other half wants to watch Jake Paul get hit in the face. Yeah, right. exactly. So exactly. Right. 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 That's, that's exactly mm -hmm. what True it is. Enough. Yes. True enough. <laughs> Remember when uh, uh, they had all the... 70s television stars fighting each other. Mm -hmm. Yes, like Danny Bonaducci and, and, and Screech. Yeah, yes. that was not cool. And, it was a bummer. Celebrity <laughs> boxing is what it was. Yeah, called. I didn't like it. It was like on Fox yeah. and didn't Tanya Harding Potter. do it? Tanya Harding boxed yeah. somebody. Horshack. Uh, it was just yeah. sad. Horshack boxed. Yeah, he got murdered. 
Oh, man. It and was like a producer in L.A. just saw, like, old actors, like, working at a grocery store, and instead of helping them out with, like, a project, he was like, I'm going to make you fight the guy from Cheers. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It was... It was uh, Odd. Ron, uh, what is Horshack's name? Palillo? Ron, Ron Palillo. That is just sad. <laughs> <laughs> Poor <laughs> Ben. He just got killed. Man. <laughs> As Tom would say, it was a hate crime. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last boxing match I went to, it wasn't, you know, in Vegas or anything, but uh, it was a, a sanctioned uh, heavyweight boxing match, but the undercard... Uh, it was two ladies boxing. Oh, no. I think they, back at the time, they called it Foxy Boxing. Mm. Oh. And um, so the bell, you know, rings, and they come out to the middle of the, and this one, one of the ladies hits the other one right in the face, and the one that got hit burst into tears and walked back to her corner and threw the towel in. Oh. How, how, how is that oh. fun for anyone? It right? was, I, that was the last <laughs> live boxing match I ever attended. <laughs> so, oh. was that such a bummer. And there's something about guys and cigars at boxing matches. <laughs> what do you mean? They, just, they like to smoke them at the boxing yeah, match? Yeah, like there's, everybody had a cigar but me at this boxing match. It was, it was crazy. <laughs> That's weird. A I lot think of it's bros. Just, it's yeah. like primal. It makes you feel like old school entertainment. So you want to have the stogie with you. Maybe. I did look around and think I'd see a guy in a, a, for, a fedora with a yeah. the press card in his. <laughs> All right, let's go flash see the camera. Flash, flash! That woman just started crying. Unbelievable. Oh. And if you're not crying yet this morning, how about this story? Several Kansas City Chiefs fans who suffered frostbite during the bitterly cold playoff game back in January between the Chiefs and the Dolphins at Arrowhead may may now need. Amputation. Oh. This is terrible. According to reports, several fans got frostbite when they attended the playoff game. Uh, it was four below air temperature at kickoff. The wind chill was 27 below. Physicians say that of the 70% of patients with frostbite who now are being referred for amputations, a majority are Chiefs fans. One woman got frostbite. She took her gloves off, she said, for just five minutes to help put up a tent in the parking lot. And she might face amputation. Oh boy! And don't you uh, don't you have a song about this? I do. Yeah. I lost a finger <laughs> when the Chiefs played San Francisco. Oh no! Don't let adult. the facts get in the way of a good song. <laughs> I got gangrene <laughs> below the knee. Oh, I lost a foot. <laughs> Where did my fist go? <laughs> I love my team, <laughs> the Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> go Chiefs! <laughs> Pat Godwin, everybody. Yeah. Pat Godwin. So when do the lawsuits start? <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Well, how, who, uh, yeah. yeah. Who do you sue, the I, NFL or God? I don't do know, do but don't you think? That'd be a tough one. I feel like if you choose to go to the game, that's on you, right? Right, you would they, think that. There were a lot of winter weathers. She well, you could have put heaters in every seat. <laughs> well, and then uh, look for the biggest pockets. The NFL has yep. uh, pretty deep pockets, but they don't have any sort of uh, contingency plans uh, for a cold weather game. Uh, remember they did... Uh, delay a Bills game right. uh, this past season, right. but they don't have anything for extreme cold. Mm -hmm. So maybe maybe they will. There's a, a shady lawyer out there working on this right now. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Would Just, they have uh, Would they have played a hockey game? They would have played a hockey game outside, right? Uh, yeah. A four below? If it were like the Winter Classic and it were that cold, I think yeah. they still would have done it. Man, a big sheet of ice and four degrees... <laughs> Four below weather. <laughs> How do they keep their feet from freezing? Um, I think the movement helps, yeah. honestly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they got big socks. Mm. <laughs> big socks. Big, big thick socks. <laughs> uh, yesterday, uh, uh, Willie doesn't know this, but yesterday we were talking about tumbleweeds. Tell me a lot about them. Uh, oh. Josh even went so far as to say this is from Scott. Uh, he thinks it's cool when he sees a tumbleweed. Love it. So do I. In fact, when I see one on the road, I aim for it in my vehicle. It's a blast to watch them explode. Yep. Can you please tell other drivers to stop dodging them and causing accidents? 
Did it, you know that tumbleweeds are not native to the United States? No, I just tumbleweeds. Those are just in cartoons to establish the fact that no one's around. Right? You've never seen them. I've, I don't person? think I've ever seen a tumbleweed. Huh. Oh yeah. You're just driving across the Great American mm -hmm. West. Tumbleweed goes in front of you. That happens. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. They'll cross the road, yeah, the or you'll see them just rolling around the dirt. <laughs> this it's was always in a joy. I love it. South Jordan, Utah, for four days, scores of beach ball-sized tumbleweeds were blowing around by the heavy wind. Huh. But the they plants. They were blocky roads. They were. Yeah. Can't be blocking the roads. That's how I get places. I yeah. don't think I've ever seen a tumbleweed in person either. I have. Oh, it's Texas. A, it's a, it's a real have trip. you? Yeah, plenty. Well, the, well, I lived tumbleweeds, in New Mexico, too. The, yeah. Tumbleweeds in the Ozarks? No. No, <laughs> no. But I've driven out west a lot, and it's, yeah, it's always fun. Is that right? <laughs> Sometimes. Boy, here's the real treat. Yeah? You see a tumbleweed, <laughs> and then you look up, and there's a dirt devil, too, also. Oh, oh yeah, one of those. those uh, I better just pull over oh, yeah. and go to sleep. Is there a roadrunner in there, too? Ah, those are much smaller than you want them to be. And then you think... They are uh, much smaller. Yes. Than I didn't know they made a Kill Bill 3. What is this? This is great. They got to yeah. Maybe. Maybe not. Yeah. Uh, this guy, Scott, says it's the, uh, the equivalent of being hit in the head with a cotton ball when he runs over... I had the same... Uh, oh, yeah, they just break apart. Right. Yeah, they yeah. just break apart. But I have the same... Uh, I aim my car for... Uh, Don't. <laughs> Goose. Well, well, you don't really aim for them. All right. Yes, I, I should. Them. Yeah, I don't speed up, but I don't slow down either. Yeah. They and know, if they, they step out, they step out in front. There. Are... They they get their wings. <laughs> I'm sorry. No. no. <laughs> right. Straight it's up. It's baby man. season right now. They're all laying on their nests. So yeah, be careful well, out yeah. there. They're adorable. Is yeah. it really baby season? Yeah, they're laying. They're sitting on their eggs. Mm -hmm. Baby season. Can we get baby yeah. goose for the show? And, and we should get one of these days when Tom takes. Try a day to off. steal a baby goose. See what happens. We should. Those they're very uh, mom, aggressive, uh, territorial when yeah. it comes to stealing babies because yeah. I like to get them for my omelets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You only need one. You only need one egg. For <laughs> my brother and I were Good fishing and there was a gosling in the middle of the lake. It had obviously been parted because you'll see them all over. Oh, uh, look at you with the big word gosling. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's good. A little less clunky than baby goose. <laughs> <laughs> so the, <laughs> the his spirit lives on. Gosling, <laughs> littered on the highway. And because you'll see the moms and the babies following them, they're teaching sure. them to swim and fly. Right. So this was just one by itself. I go, Dan, Jeff, we gotta, we gotta get that and put it on the land, or it's in the middle of the lake here. And he, he, he wouldn't let me do it. He goes, no, nah, nature is doing something. Oh, <laughs> probably got eaten by an He was alligator. like a documentarian. We couldn't get ourselves involved. Oh. If that, that's a good documentarian team. They don't get involved yeah. in whatever's happened. I would yeah. love the documentary if you try to save a baby goose. The mom sees you, doesn't understand what's happening, and then ferociously attacks you. Oh, and, and I fall in the water. <laughs> and then Somehow bitten by a snake also. Just I the, wanted to save the gosling. <laughs> then an alligator comes out of nowhere and they're tumbled. Yeah. And, no oh. good deed. And by the way, Willie, it's a gosling, not a baby goose. I, I said, said gosling, please, please. Didn't I say gosling? No, you said baby goose. Said baby what an goose. idiot. I can't believe I did that in front of him. <laughs> Son of a gun. Hey, don't you be an idiot like Willie. Get Raycon everyday <laughs> earbuds. <laughs> Raycons offer amazing... We don't use that word here. Yeah, I'm a stupid or idiot. We don't use Neither that. Neither of those. Yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> Raycon... I'm sorry, Willie. It's okay. <laughs> Raycons offer amazing audio quality at half the price of other premium audio brands. How about their tens of thousands of five-star reviews readily available on uh, the internet, which is now on your computer? Raycons optimized gel tips fit every ear ever made, and they get a load of this. Raycons stay in your ears, whether you're working out, walking the dog, maybe you're on the treadmill, Raycons stay in place. Plus, they have eight hours of playtime, 32 hours of battery life, and you don't have to worry about whether they're up for the task. Plus, you can enjoy features like their easy-to-use earbud tap functions, noise isolation, and awareness mode. Go to buyraycon.com slash Tom today and get 20% off your Raycon order plus free shipping. That's right. 20% off and free shipping. Just go to buyraycon.com slash Tom. That's buyraycon.com slash Tom. You can be there on the bank watching the baby goose out there <laughs> listening to your Raycon earbuds. Goslings, please. Just um, an amazing day. World records coming up. Don't worry. We've got world records. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning.
We have uh, the young Shane Moss, a uh, comedian from uh, Wisconsin, yeah. now living in Boston. Yeah, I got the uh, ghost of Christmas future. Uh, there you go. Right next to me. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's not yeah, too late, yeah. is it? I can still, I can still change. You can. No. <laughs> Turns out it is too late. Oh, yes. uh, now, you, you mentioned that your uh, girlfriend is a veterinarian. Yeah. Now, did you have any normal jobs uh, prior to this comedy thing? Um, yeah, yeah, I had. Uh, I, I did a lot of manual labor type stuff. I, I worked in a factory for a few years. Worked construction. The worst thing that I ever did was um, I, I was a temp laborer. Yeah. Um, which was just an awful, awful job. And there's like no health insurance. No. Or, or anything with it. There's just workman's compensation. So anytime I need to seek medical attention, it need to be a work-related thing. You know, I'd have to call right. up my boss. He'd be like, yeah, I don't know. I better go and see a doctor. It's just yesterday, I think I was just picking up a little bit too much weight, and I think I might have gotten herpes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, I better have that checked. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's, uh, it's insane all the things you have to worry about. These, it, it, like, I remember when I was in grade school, uh, you know, I'm I'm not that old, but it just it, 20 years ago in, in grade school, the biggest concern was don't share hats. You might get lice. Oh. Yeah, they're much more serious now. Like mm. don't share needles. You might get AIDS. <laughs> yeah. Well, at Come least on. you can share hats again. Cares <laughs> 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 about lice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. How true. Uh-huh. I see. I see. Uh, Shane Moss is, is our guest. We've talked about the fact that you drive all over the place. Yeah. But let me ask you this. We've. Uh, this is one of my favorite topics. Uh, uh, it's kind of an inside showbiz thing, but uh, every once in a while you get what's termed a hell gig. Yeah. Maybe yeah. you're on stage and uh, you're in a small club or a bar and they've got a TV on over here. Or there's a pool game going on. People aren't paying attention. Do you have any great hell gig stories? Um, well, uh, I, I have a few, and um, uh, well, I'll, I'll tell one anyway, and then if we have time for more, that's uh, cool. Um, uh, I'll start. I'll combine uh, cars and a hell gig. How's that? Uh-huh. Um, I, uh, I was in Detroit. Uh, recently, and, and this actually wasn't a hell gig at all. It's just kind of my fault. I made a little mistake. Detroit's kind of a l- little bit dangerous. It's actually ranked the most dangerous big city mm-hmm. in the country. And if you remind them of that, they will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> or try. Yeah. 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 Uh, and I let it slip on stage that I drive a Hyundai, oh, uh, which is a sin uh-huh. there. And I yeah. had to explain to him, I was like, listen, you know, I'm all for supporting American-made products. I don't want anyone in Detroit to lose their job or anything. It's just that if I'm driving through Detroit, I want the most reliable vehicle possible. <laughs> and, uh, wow. That didn't go over very well. Uh, <laughs> Tiki Barber here. Remember the days when I was a running back in the NFL? Well, if you're on your feet all day like I was, you get the struggle. The secret is orange insoles. Their insoles are like magic for your feet and body. They'll help you kick hip pain, sore feet, and lower back discomfort to the sidelines. Feel better, do more with orange insoles. Bob and Tom, 24-7. Uh, Norman, honey, what you doing? It's getting late. I'm downstairs, honey. Uh, just getting some cereal. Snowcombs. Thank God he found it. I was getting desperate. I hope this works. You know, Judy tried it with Ted, and she said he's become insatiable. Boy, will Snookums be in for a treat, because her hubby is chomping on the new cereal for men who are sexually dysfunctional. (laughs) It's nut and raisin, honey. (laughs) Mmm. This sure is tasty. (laughs) Mmm. Honey? I'll be right up. (laughs) Nut and raisin, honey. The cereal that gets you up in the morning, or any time for that matter. Nut and raisin, honey. 
Ladies, he'll love the taste, and you'll love that filling feeling. <laughs> oh, my God, Norman, where did you get that thing? Nut and raisin honey from Post. Who else? Nut and raisin honey coming to a store near you. Nut and raisin honey, eat them from the bowl or right out of the box. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. This is Mark Sweeney, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. Comedian uh, Greg Hahn is here with us. Uh, I love going on dates. You get to go to the girl's place and meet her pets. They always have cats. It's always uh, cats. It's never anything cool like a wild dingo or a wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> it's never a venomous duck or a bat. A venomous <laughs> duck? You get like a porcupine. It's usually cat. Usually two cats. Like a little one she just rescued from the trash 10 seconds ago. Just got run over by a train or something. Still has leaves stuck to its rear end. It's bulimic and anemic. <laughs> <laughs> then the girl's gonna tell you like the story how she met the cat. Oh, I put some I put some milk out on Tuesday. She drank all the milk and came back on Wednesday. That's a beautiful story. Take your top off. <laughs> Twice late is our guest. <laughs> but uh, I've been fired from every job I've ever had. That's true. I've never been. Have you really? Yes. Well, Personal <laughs> record: three hours at Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I got a plaque from the Colonel. <laughs> I was 18. They hired me as a cashier. That's smart. Let's just take an aspiring comedian and put him in between fat people and their food. <laughs> mm. What could go wrong? Mm. I'm there three hours. This guy comes walking up to the counter. Yeah, what's the difference between your two-piece dinner and your four-piece dinner? <laughs> well, <laughs> let's take a look at let me, it. Let me get on my calculator. I'm going to have to log on to the internet here. <laughs> wonder if it could be two pieces of chicken. What if that could be it? <laughs> I wonder, wonder if you could have figured that out if you sat in a honey pot like Pooh Bear and think, 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 think. <laughs> Fired. Hello. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24 7. <laughs> Welcome back to the Bob and Tom show. Tom on assignment. We're all here. Like death and taxes, this show continues. Yeah. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. Something like that. Um, there's Willie uh, joins us, Pat Godwin, uh, Christy, uh, Josh Arnold, was it? Yes, that's it. Yeah, Ace Cosby. Well, maybe have that joke of the day. I, I promise nothing. <laughs> I have a question. What are we supposed to do with this uh, amputation of Kansas City Chiefs fans because they attended uh, the NFL game where it was four below? And there's an inordinate amount of people facing amputations. I feel bad. I feel horrible. For us. Yeah, for them. it's a bummer. They went to have a good time, and yes, they went out in the cold. But no, you still don't expect that. That's mm -hmm. crazy. Being a caring, compassionate, mature, well, a caring and compassionate. I, I don't. I mean, it's a bummer. Yeah, it sucks. But I mean, there isn't of... really anything to be done, is there? Has this happened before? Like in Green Bay all those not years that, ago? Not that I can... I don't think this has ever happened before. That, That's what I heard. that we yeah. know about. I, I, mean, I'm, I haven't been aware of it like this. Me neither. It's crazy. It's, it's not Do you good. think Tom would be blaming them for going in the first place? He tends to blame victims. He does. Quite often. He does tend to blame the victim. <laughs> well, it can be kind of fun. It can be kind of a good time to blame a victim. <laughs> That's as, true. as a Griswold, you learn that at a very young age. Uh, no, he would say, "He would, say, uh, well, they shouldn't even be having these games." Yeah. He thinks that if you're in a cold weather city, you should have to build a dome. Right. And right. I'm pretty sure now there's a rule in the NFL: no cold city will get any more money to build domes from now on. If they already to build a no dome, excuse me. So the Bills are fine. Oh, I see what you're Green saying. Green Bay's fine, but if they were to build a new stadium in Green Bay, which would never happen, it would have to have a Is dome. Is that right? I, I think know. that's okay. the new rule, that, but I'm not certain. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's all for the uh, domes, but he also likes football play being played out of doors. And so. then, well, he also gets real, real mad if the roof of certain domes isn't open on days that he. he, he yeah. So. So here's one thing you guys are dealing with. You guys are getting frustrated because my dad is showing that he's not consistent with his opinions. <laughs> you got to work on that. It's going to be glaringly inconsistent. Okay, so that's our... That's on you at this point. That's our mistake. At this point, it's on you for not learning it. You've been around him so long, you haven't learned anything. All that's right. That's on y'all. Okay. So you, you learned that about age 12 in the Griswold <laughs> household. You know, a casual observer would think, especially me and Christy would think after over 30 years of working with Tom, 
that we would have our little shortcuts or, <laughs> or some way to, oh, well, hang on. Well, he, you know, this is the way he is. He'll, we have no idea still to this day well, see, that's, what that's, to expect. That's the inconsistency I was talking about. Right, right, right. It keeps you on your toes. It does, and he likes that. That's his goal. That's absolutely <laughs> his goal. He's just a bad person. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible. Now, uh, I don't know if you can uh, you can uh, talk about this, Willie, but yesterday Josh got all fired up because he had received a speeding ticket from an airplane. What? If you will. And this was, you know, you see those signs every now and again, uh, speed patrolled by aircraft, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. And we're watching you. Yeah. yeah. Like, all right. But this was the one time where I got pulled over and he goes, you were doing this. And I wanted to go, I, I'd like uh, prove this, please. Prove to me that a plane... And Christy said, think about it. Have you ever seen an airplane that is, oh, that what's that airplane? Oh, that's a, a highway patrol airplane. Right, right. Yeah. I, I mean... It's if I would, if I could watch Josh, who I, who is very respectful, but if I could watch you get in a fight with law enforcement <laughs> about like a drone giving you a ticket, <laughs> the Constitution. <laughs> this is against the damn Constitution. And now the reason I didn't get so upset is because I was speeding. <laughs> oh sure. Yeah, I was, I was going like fifteen over. And right. Christy, Christy said, "Have you ever seen a plane?" I've never seen a plane. There I've you go. Yeah, have you never. ever seen the plane? No. Are they, are no. they still doing it? Yes. Yeah. I this is from Greg. Okay. Hello, village idiots. Oh, hi. I used to work at the state police airplane department, oh. and I would go up loaded with equipment for aerial speed checks. Sure. Wow. I also got to go flying it for test flights. My son was caught doing 80 in a 55 by my plane. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently they put something on the highway so the plane can tell... Uh, there's some sort of grid marking that they can tell how fast you're going. It's by crazy. How quickly you're coming up on the markings on the highway. It's fine. Yeah. I, and I get that all that exists. I know it exists, and I know that they do it. But I just, I've always been told that if, you get, if you're if you pulled over for speeding, that the you can ask to see the speedom, the, uh, yeah, yeah. the radar. Right. And if they can't show it to you, then you can contest. <laughs> I don't know that any of this. I, first off, I don't, if you're speeding, just take the ticket. You, you, yeah. you, you did something wrong. But. I've always been told you're supposed to go to court for it because the policemen don't ever show up. Right? Yeah, I know. I've They're always you too. always talk to yeah. those guys. Yeah. Well, you'll get out. Of it. That's yeah. right. That, but, but <laughs> those same guys say uh, if you get a DUI, uh, if you're drunk and get pulled over, put a penny in your mouth, and you'll be okay on the breathalyzer. <laughs> so I, I don't know if that works or uh, not. Isn't um, it a weird system we live in where you can get pulled over for going like, let's say you're going thirty over. Okay. But then you can contact a lawyer and get your ticket so-called fixed. Oh, yeah. Where they'll just go, they just go into a court and they agree with a judge. And How about we say he threw a plastic <laughs> bottle out the window and, okay. Like, what? <laughs> Why wouldn't you just pay That's the... so weird. Why don't you just pay the 200 bucks and move on? You with know, the they, ticket? Yeah. Yeah, you insurance points, um, all, that, all that crap. I think they all also do that with... Uh, Bigger crime. I know. Than speeding. <laughs> it's so, that's such a weird thing to well, me. Well, now, you know, let's I, not call it murder. <laughs> yeah, Hang yeah. On a second. Well, let's say he was a little the, crazy at the time. So, yeah. We can plea deal this Yeah, time. Yeah, plea yeah. deals are real strange that everybody, just because you throw some money around, everybody pretends that it was a different crime than it actually was. Your Honor, my client is sort of a wacky goofball. <laughs> <laughs> we'll throw this out. Especially with knives. <laughs> But he's he, giving me money. He <laughs> really money. likes not. <laughs> you know how you really like your uh, uh, collection of fine art? He feels the same way about knives. So. And he likes putting them in people. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't care to do such a thing. And you certainly wouldn't. <laughs> no, but who am I to judge this man? <laughs> Everything Can we just I say know. he put him in one person and not seven? <laughs> Don't let one bad day. <laughs> yes. One bad day. And by the way, I should say at this point that everything I know about the law uh, comes from Suits. Oh, okay. I, I love Suits. Have you guys watched show. Suits? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I like can't. It. For I like some it. reason, like uh, six months ago, uh, I I was on one of my websites or whatever for looking for something to watch, and Suits had taken off on Netflix. It was the most viewed the second or third thing most viewed in the history of Netflix. So I started watching. Evidently, everybody was watching Suits. Yeah. And it's fun and entertaining. And now yeah. you see the two guys, they're on commercials Well, and, and now they're going to reboot Suits. 
They're going to reboot, reboot suits. suits. Yeah, they are. It's called bathing suits. They're just on vacation. That's so funny, Bravo. That is so funny. <laughs> so stupid. That, no, no. That's a wonderful not, That's a gorgeous piece of business. It's so good. You take a day off. Uh, bathing suits. Did you see bathing suits yesterday? Yeah. yeah. They seem to be relaxed. Yeah. For me, they're wearing the weird bathing suits, like Dick Van Dyke and Shitty Shitty Van Dyke. <laughs> oh, that's Chitty Chitty. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so you hit the C A. See you at Thanksgiving. Gotta really hit that CA. See you at Thanksgiving. And uh, more uh, aerial uh, tickets coming up. More airplanes. I thought they quit doing that. I really did. Oh, I thought the reason we were even talking about it is because it recently happened to somebody. Yeah, this no, this guy said he used to, but uh, yeah, these oh. airplanes are a real thing. Oh. And uh, this guy, well, I'll tell you. All, All right. right. Okay. Yeah. We'll be back. Well, what do you got coming up in news, uh, Christy? Uh, well, we have a lucky strike for a, con a Kentucky couple. <laughs> uh, you got to really hit that country. The Kentucky whole Kentucky uh... couple who uh, lost and found a lottery ticket. Did you know that living near bars and fast food places could be bad for your health? I've heard that. Have you heard that? Yes, I have. And early risers may have inherited a faster body clock from Neanderthals. Neanderthal? And we're saying Neanderthals. Aren't we? Isn't it Neanderthal? I haven't heard a word you've said since you... <laughs> <laughs> We're saying a lot of things. Let me tell you something. If there's any way you can guarantee making mistakes like that all morning, we're going to be just fine. <laughs> oh, and we'll be right back. Who else? This is the Bob and Tom Show. Got something to say? Send us an email. Bob and Tom at BobandTom.com. Who else have you met? With you this know. voice that you any, anybody else? I've met I've met everybody I do except for Denzel Washington. He's hmm. the one I haven't met. Um, Is anyone I, upset by your imitation? Yes. Oh. <laughs> yes. 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 Oh, thanks for bringing it up. Yes. Sorry. There's uh, where Kanye had a lot to say. <laughs> but oh, really? He's that, usually so. so no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? Well, did you really count that in him being mad? That? that was just him being Kanye. Yeah, that's Shannon Sharp hates my impression. <laughs> he cannot stand it. I'm guessing because it's accurate. <laughs> you know that. That's what I believe. I thought it would. I thought it would bite on. I thought it would make it. <laughs> and you know the fact that Thanon doesn't like it is just offensive to me. But you know yeah. some people. I hear you. Some people just you know skip, skip, skip. skip. Some people just don't like mirrors. Skip. <laughs> but when you see the mirror, you say to yourself, "Do I really sound like that?" And I'm gonna be right there on the other side saying, "Yes, you do." <laughs> Shannon hates it, man. It's it. Everybody else, I haven't. And Ben Carson had a little bit to say, but, you know, he ain't popping. So, whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? he, he, can, he can say whatever. I, I pretty much, that was like my that was like my, it was a character, pretty much. <laughs> he was sleepy. It wasn't sleepy even an impression. Man. I did these little cat hands. <laughs> you know, right. the hand, yeah. with the hands like this, yeah. and I would turn my face, and so many people would ask me. They'd come to my shows. Can we do the Ben Carson pose? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is actually a thing. Yeah. I didn't yeah. think it was a thing, but so I got, so there's people sending me pictures, posing like this. Even somebody sent me a picture of their cat doing it. <laughs> their cat? There was, a, there was a picture of a baby. He was doing it. Mm -hmm. I was like, I did not know that this obscure impression had so much premise over you all. Uh, <laughs> I did not know that. Yeah, what's he, is, what is he, like, secretary of something? He may, he may be retiring. Yeah, he's something. He's, something. he's secretary of we, housing. We don't got to, yeah, yeah, you know. We got, <laughs> I'm just, let's get past him. We just, want him, we just want him to have, you know, something really something high profile do, so you can bring yeah. it back. Back. Oh, okay. I wish, man. You know, he just needs to go fill out an application and work at Arby's. I want to. <laughs> I want to parry you. Have a philosophy on uh, doing impressions of people who are no longer with us. Uh, do I? Do, I, I mean, yeah. Okay can you that? do Taft? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, William Taft. William Taft. <laughs> <laughs> no, but my FDR is pretty dope. Yeah. <laughs> you my sit. Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Sit yeah, I definitely sit down for that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do Teddy Roosevelt, but I do FDR. <laughs> <laughs> he has a back of a chocolate declare. That's one of his famous quotes. <laughs> Jay Farrow is our guest. Hey, hi, I'm Tom. This is Chick. That's Josh, and this is Christy Lee. Christy What's happening? Hey, Charleston, the Bob and Tom Show here and our friends at Rock 105 WKLC 
are bringing us to town for a live show with special guest Duke Tomato and the Bob and Tom Brass to Mouth Horns Plus. Do not miss an amazing comedy show that night. That's right. It all happens Friday, April 5th at the Charleston Coliseum and Convention Center. If you're listening anywhere within 100 miles of Charleston or if you come out and see us live on the morning of April 5th, that's a free show. And then get tickets for that night's Bob and Tom Show comedy tour event with who, Christy? Pat Godwin, Josh Arnold, Jeff Oske, Willie Griswold. All hosted by Tom and Christy. Aww. Tickets on sale now and they're going fast. Get your tickets at Ticketmaster.com or the Charleston Coliseum box office. See you there! <laughs> <laughs> you simply have to sign and file. Did you go to Tax Preparation H Incorporated? I sure did. Do we owe much? Yep. Oh, we really got ream. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, it doesn't hurt as much thanks to Tax Preparation H Incorporated. Tax Preparation H Incorporated. We're just itching to oh. do your return. <laughs> Tax Preparation H Incorporated. <laughs> <sighs> Hey, and if you want, we'll even tell Uncle Sam to shove it up his <laughs> <laughs> the Essential Morning Radio. All day and all night. You might as well shoot me when the beer runs out. Bob and Tom Radio. Tom Radio. We have uh, also a Matt Fulcher on here. Yeah. And um, Matt, what do you do for fun? What do, what do you, what do you Skateboard. Do? Um, I, like to, uh, I like to go in a liquor store. <laughs> Which sounds fun, right? Mm -hmm. like a, yeah. And I get like a miniature vodka, like a miniature vodka, like this big. And when I'm handing the guy the money, I'll be like, yo, I'm getting messed up tonight. <laughs> 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 He's got paid about this bitch. <laughs> Something fun to do. If you want to yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, 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 you know, I haven't done that, but I'm Bob doing it tonight. Oh, tonight. yeah. Uh -huh. Damn, uh -huh. you're it tonight. Uh -huh. I'm doing it. It's Friday, man. That's right. right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we have uh, comedian Nick Griffin. Have you ever seen a person complain in a fast food restaurant? That oh, is a, yeah. That's amazing to yep. me. Mm -hmm. yep. What's taking this kid so long? What's? Why is he going so slow? Why is he going so slow? <laughs> hmm. Well, he's rethinking every bad decision. <laughs> He's ever made in this life. <laughs> got him to this horrible offer for us. Shut up, your fries are coming. Oh, and they seem God. a little irritable, too. He has to summon all his energy to keep from turning around and stabbing you in the eyeball with the spork, you fat jackass. He's got an entire meal for three dollars. <laughs> and never got out of the car. <laughs> and you're complaining. Uh, <laughs> also with us, Christine Stedman. Now, you're a mom? Well, a mom and a grandma. I think you know that. I know. She's, I'm a grandpa. She's just how this Are works. Are you? Yep. She's um, been married 27 years and still a virgin. To yes. Well, you know, I have a, I have a lot of grandkids. My daughter keeps having babies, has one almost every year. Really? <laughs> wow. Yeah, she called me the other day. She goes, Mom, guess what? I'm pregnant again. There must be something in the air. I'm like, yeah, you're late. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously. Hello? <laughs> Bang! Hey, hello? Sing! Uh, I'm getting her fixed. Comedian Diana Jordan is here with us. Now, can I ask you something? Yeah. Since you've been here last, have you had any augmentation of any kind? No. Okay. Must what, be. Oh, I'm wearing the Wonder Bra. Is that? Are you kidding? I, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I just showed it. Impressive. Yeah. They call it the Wonder Bra because when you take it off, the guy wonders where in the hell you're. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, this is Dr. Will Miller. Brothers. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Present. The amazing genius Pat Godwin. Ooh. Hello, chick. He's over in the performance room. Uh, perhaps we'll need to revisit the the Kansas City Chiefs fans having a problem because it was so cold song. <laughs> or uh, for Mr. Oske, he joins us. Hi, Jeff. Hey, thanks for having me. You're welcome. It's a pleasure being had. Uh, there's <laughs> Willie Griswold. Good morning. Josh Arnold is here. Uh, he's here. Uh, there's Ace Cosby. And I'm uh, Chick. Have you ever been pulled over by an airplane, Jeff? No. No. Have you ever seen an airplane? Uh, yeah. Uh, patrolling, <laughs> I guess. Uh, no. No. I have not. 
Okay, you know, this is going to sound you, ridiculous. You answered that the exact way you should have, given the way I asked the question. Okay. I honestly thought when they had those airplanes patrolling, I really thought that they would swoop down, like, and there would be a car, and they would make you pull over, like, from above, and there would be a car waiting for you down there on the ground. Well, at least you didn't think the plane would... Land on top of my car? Pull you over and pull up behind <laughs> yeah, you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Huh. Isn't it... Isn't it true <laughs> that they have a certain amount of the highways? That's are, not true. Are straight so the planes can, can land, land in emergencies? Is that's that a Cold War era conspiracy? I had I heard that. I heard it? that's not true. Oh, yeah. really? Mm -hmm. Also, about every, I've heard that every 3.3 miles, there's an underground bunker. <laughs> that is true. That's true. Right. Mm -hmm. You know that? And in certain parts of the country, the underground bunker has a Sabaro and a McDonald's and a Starbucks. You pull over, it's all in one little easy area. Ah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And those it's like em easy bunker employees of those restaurants, they can't tell anybody where they where they work. Remember, if you work here, it stays here. Something like that. <laughs> Loose lips sink tomorrow. I think. So. <laughs> uh, this is from Luke. I live near a stretch of I eighty in Iowa. Oh, I that's where this happened oh. with me. Is it? Was it? Yes. Uh, it's regularly patrolled by the the state patrol airplane. Yeah, that's this is exactly where it happened. And Christy, yes, yes. you can see the plane. Huh. The one they use is a small Piper Cub. Oh, shaped like a little bear. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's not very high, and it's going slow enough that, given the height and how slow, it looks like it's standing still in the air. Hmm. I've not been pulled over by one, but my father-in-law got uh, nabbed for speeding by the plane. <laughs> Uh, several years ago, it was one of the best <laughs> moments of my life. Oh. <laughs> I've never seen that. Yeah, I didn't see it either. But I'm also not driving around like Ray Liotta and Goodfellas yeah, looking, no joke. <laughs> looking up at the sky. <laughs> oh, you got to get paranoid. Right? That'll happen. Oh, you want to see airplanes? I'll show you airplanes. <laughs> I've never had that, but I have had the crop dusting planes that sure. fly yeah. so low. Yeah. One flew over me. I was driving on I-65. I thought we were being invaded. Uh, I was terrified. Yeah. Yeah, That's that, crazy. That is scary. And we were talking about nicknames a couple days ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Weren't we? I was, of course, Chuck's Deluxe. Christy was uh, I didn't have Hot one. Pants. Was it Hot Pants? No, I never had one in high school. I'm pretty sure it was Hot Pants. Oh, well, I wish. Hot Pants sounds right. Josh, you had Blarney? Yeah, yeah, from Arnold. It turned into Blarnold and then it turned into Blarney. <laughs> a fun one. Yeah, Oscar, that is did fun. you have a nickname? Jeffro Lady Jackson. Mm, yes, that's right. Jeffro oh, Lady that's Jackson. Right. Jeffro. 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 Because I had a fro. Oh, all right. Uh, and Will, Will, I call. I still to this day call you Wilbur. When yeah, you Wilbur. Football coaches, Grizz or the Grizz, Grizzy, mm -hmm. something along those lines. See, we think Grizzy. we think those are lazy nicknames. You think that's so? Part of the. Huh. I I prefer a nickname that's based on your personality, not on your name. Yeah. Ah. Okay. You see. Yeah, I don't have anything like that. Yeah. Fun guy. Your nickname around here is part time. <laughs> But not to your face. Thank you. Uh, no, yeah, it's okay. I'm going to cry in the bathroom after this. this. Oh, you. No, you're not. Uh, this is from Scott. We hey, feces faces. Oh, wait That's a, a nice minute. nickname. Oh, wow. I like the alliteration. That's my <laughs> nickname. True enough. Um, I went to a Catholic high school in the central coast of California. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the basketball players got the shower nickname Tripod. Ah, sure, because oh, sure. yeah. I love happen. cameras so much. And then he, go, and then it goes, <laughs> then it goes dot dot dot. You know, three legs. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he lives in uh, Pontevedra, Florida. That's uh, nice. And by the way, Pontevedra <laughs> is ninety-three miles from guess where. Don't go care. Land. What else do we have? Going on? <laughs> <laughs> I was watching the Stetson Hatters basketball game last night. Where are you? Stetson University. Guess where that is located? Where? Deland, Florida. No, no kidding. Honest wow. Guy. And they're called the Hatters? The Hatters. Stetson Hatters. Absolutely. Oh, do they make Stetson hats in Florida? No, they make them at the school. That's where they all come yes. from. Yes. <laughs> that's their yeah. I don't know how the name got to be Stetson, but that's... that's uh, my cousin went there. He got his degree in brims. Oh. <laughs> Did he end up getting a brim job? <laughs> that, uh, why is nobody else laughing at that? I'm <laughs> I don't know. Apparently, part time's not I, good. Is it, I, 
believe the problem is Christy's in charge of saying bad words. <laughs> That's the problem. Yeah, don't jump on my territory here. <laughs> I, my laugh was, I was laughing so much that I, it wasn't really coming out. So unfortunately there was no sound after you said that. <laughs> I loved it. Well, I did too. I was really. I Would was you really shop at a store called Brim Jobs? I'd walk in. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know, I have gone into just because of the name of the store and looked around. Real, I didn't buy anything. Nonth nothing but cakes. Yeah. I, I was and there yesterday. It's a fine product. Yeah, yeah it's a great I, I product. I bought a little cake for a friend. Yeah. You were there yesterday? Yes. Wait a second. There is a store. They sell so much mini bun cakes. It's a brick and mortar store. Yeah, nothing yeah, bun cakes. A handful. You can buy really? A it's not a joke? One. No. Yeah. No. no. Chick, do you, you know, remember you and I went to lunch and we saw nothing bun cakes moving in next door? Yes. I, 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 think, I feel uh, like we stood out in the parking lot and giggled for five minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because the sign had just gone up. And they are everywhere now. Yeah, they're I good. Mean, and I believe they're we... They're a franchise operation. One of our friends from the uh, NASCAR oh. world owns them around we, uh, here. We mused, that can't be the name of this store. <laughs> right, right. And the pop-up flavor right now is caramel turtle cake. And let me tell you, because that means it's only going to be around for a few weeks, and it is delicious. You know, Christy, we got an email uh, earlier. <laughs> you, were, you were talking about Little Debbie's. Yes. And, oh, and uh, the uh, the uh, uh, somewhere in Tennessee has a, a play park, if you will. Yeah. A little Debbie theme. Yes, and that led Christy to tell us about some recipes that she's encountered. Well, Anthony's written in, can we make a segment where Christy talks about snack foods? <laughs> Gotta say, it was kind of hot. Oh, really? <laughs> I'll hang up and listen for your response. Uh -huh. <laughs> and by the way, I want little Debbie to know that, uh, first of all, I have to have a uh, box, the big boy, the big box of oatmeal pies in my refer refrigerator at all times. Mm. But I'm on to them. They're, uh, they're, <laughs> they're zebra cakes, as we say in English. Yes. Right. They're, they're Christmas trees, if you will. The heart-shaped uh, cakes are right. all the same cake and cream. <laughs> okay? <laughs> they're just different shaped. And you're asking, how do I know this? I've tested them all. <laughs> yeah, yes. They are absolutely the same thing. I yeah. think they have a rabbit that's the same yeah. cake and cream. <laughs> Your yeah. body language and tone oh, is yeah. like someone talking about how there was a second shooter when Kennedy got shot. This <laughs> needs to be addressed, and somehow we need to get some chocolate in there. No, why does wanna... it have to be white cake and cream frosted? Why does that have to be? Why does it have to be? Why that? mess with perfection? Is what I say. Well, that's true. Mm. What's your favorite Little Debbie snack? You're you look like a Star Crunch man. I am a Star Crunch man. No, girl. thank you. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. What is Star that? Star Crunch is the best. There's a reason you're asking what is that, because it's only one no, person eats them. No, no, It's caramel and chocolate and, and uh, rice, rice crispies. Yes. Can you my get kids, it out of it? It's a mess. <laughs> we Chaos. always had oatmeal cream pies in my house. Growing up, my kids had them. I mean, who they wants love them. Someone take it. I Do you, eat, it. There. you eat around the rim and then eat the middle part because that's where well, the Well, now is. I have an erection. <laughs> I hope you're happy. We all have erections. See, I'm, not, I'm not happy because now me and Josh both have erections in the same room. That's weird. It is and weird. I do. And I then eat. the Nutty Buddy peanut bars. I yeah. Love those. Uh, I eat around uh, the rim and then put you? the Nutty Buddy in my mouth. I, I do a deconstructed Nutty Buddy. I'll suck too. I take uh, all the layers off and eat them layer I by like layer. Nice. Okay. So I saw far, a lot of girls in school do that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Nutty Buddies and Star Crunch, you say, get I'm them out. out of here. Get the cakes. The what cakes. No. Oh, so you're. This is why I'm more of a Dolly Madison. Man. You're one of these guys. <laughs> Is that right? Yes. It goes for me. It's Hostess, Dolly Madison, then Little Debbie. Just mop like she's just doing the dirty no. work. No, yeah, sweeping up the floor. When I was a kid, I dreamed of having Dolly Madison cakes because the Peanuts crew, well, they advertised for Dolly Madison. We never had those. But it was too up. expensive. Yeah. Yeah. We couldn't afford them. <laughs> Couldn't afford to be If Linus and Dolly Sally Madison. can have those. Linus and Sally and Charlie. And look at the picture of Snoopy on this cake. Why can't I have they one? They were high-end cakes? The high-end. The hostess yeah. is the, the best of them all, right? Yeah, I think so. Who can't? You can't beat a ding-dong. No, no. 
You can try. <laughs> how, how's that, how's that <laughs> erection coming? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everything you certainly say. can. <laughs> so what I do is I take I've a nutty not, buddy. You have a routine, routine and I eat around. Yeah. I, I take the nutty buddy in my hand. I eat around the rim, and then <laughs> I, I grab that ding dong. And <laughs> With the oatmeal, oatmeal cream pie. I'm a ho-ho guy, and there is a difference um, between the ho-ho and the ding dong. There is. Even shape. though they the same cake and cream. Right, right, right. They're Just very the different. shape, yeah. No, they no. really aren't. They're very different. <laughs> 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 did, you, did you like a banana flip? I don't, uh, I don't banana remember what flip. brand did that, but it was essentially rarely, but taco I shaped. Yes, I know. Banana cream oh, in I sort never of like had a one of those. Mm. Hmm. The banana, the banana flavor of those banana flips do not incur. Uh, that doesn't happen in nature. No, no. banana <laughs> taste. I don't like that artificial banana flavor. Mm. Yeah. No. You're, you're, you're a, a you're a natural, natural real taste. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, this is what I'm going to do later on today. I'm going to go home and uh, lock down the compound with my Simply Safe home security system. And, and eat, eat oatmeal bars. And eat banana flips. <laughs> Why don't they make oatmeal bars? I don't know. Like Nutty Buddies only make them oatmeal. A bar. How about that? I don't know why they're, they haven't. Oatmeal cream pies are the best. Experts and customers, and you will too, love Simply Safe for comprehensive protection. Just named Best Home Security of 2024 by U.S. News and World Report and Best Customer Service in Home Security by Newsweek. Advanced technology from Simply Safe protects every room, window, and door of your compound, and cameras protect inside and out. High definition, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And professional monitoring also for less than a dollar a day. And there's no long-term contract ever. You'll get the emergency response you need at around half the cost of traditional home security. Easy to install yourself or you can have the uh, professionals at Simply Safe test it out for you. Protect your home today and Bob and Tom Show listeners Get a special 20% off any new Simply Safe system when you sign up for Fast Protect Monitoring. Just visit simplysafetom.com. That's simplysafetom.com. There's no safe like Simply Safe. We'll be back with, uh, we're going to talk about Willie. He's out on the road. Uh, yeah. Uh, live comedy shows this weekend with a gentleman you might know, Greg Hahn. Yeah, me and Greg are up in Kokomo. Yeah. Hahn. We'll, we'll talk more about that coming up. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Essential morning radio all day and all night. Yeah, this is Bob and Tom Radio. LA. Uh, I get back to Kansas City. I was back last April for a wedding. Okay. And for a bunch of weird experiences, I become friends with Justin Verlander. He's a pitcher for the sure. oh, yeah, sure. Houston Astros. Yeah. At the time, he was pitching for the Tigers. Aaron Town playing the Royals, but they had a night off. So he and I went out and had a couple of drinks. And while we're out, he sees a young lady. He says, I think I know her. I think she's an actress. I think me and my wife hung out with her. I said, hey, man, we're in Kansas City. There's no way that chick's an actress. <laughs> she probably works at Cheesecake Factory or something. <laughs> And he said, no, watch this. He calls the waiter over. He goes, who's that chick? And he goes, well, I don't know who the chick is, but everyone at that table is Mumford and Sons. <laughs> oh. They're here playing the arena tomorrow night, and they're here having dinner. Oh, so maybe it was Carrie Mulligan. Might have been. Yeah. I don't know who it was. But he sends them a bottle on us, he says, which meant on him. him, yeah. Because I'm not. <laughs> Listen, if you're, if you're worth hundreds of millions of dollars and we're hanging out, you're buying. <laughs> yeah, sure. All right. Sorry, dude. You fly private. You're That's buying drinks. Yeah. That is a good rule. I think it's fair. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, he buys drinks. He doesn't even show up on his register. I buy drinks. I can't buy shoes next month. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. He sends them a bottle. They come over. Turns out it's not Mumford and Sons. <laughs> it's just Ann's sons. Oh. Mumford wasn't there. I don't know where he was. I assume oh. he was back at the hotel writing a song that at some point goes, oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> and sons come over, start talking to the Detroit Tigers. I'm not really involved, so I kind of tune it all out. When I come back into focus, and sons are kind of talking smack <laughs> to the Detroit Tigers about beer pong. They're like, hey, we'll whoop your butt in some beer pong. And the Detroit Tigers are like, we get paid very handsomely to put balls places. Right. Uh, bring it. So I said, hey, fellas, my parents live about eight minutes from here. Oh, boy. We could settle this. 
And I said that because I know both and Suns and the Detroit Tigers have an entire floor to do whatever they want. <laughs> so there's no reason to come to a parent's house. It was complete fake hospitality. Right. Until they all turned around and looked at me and said, hell yeah, <laughs> let's go to your parent's house and play beer pong. And I went, oh, crap. Because <laughs> it is now 2 o'clock on a Sunday night. Oh. Technically Monday morning. Yes. My parents are not gypsies. <laughs> right? They have real jobs that start in like five hours. Yes. But I also can't look at all these dudes and be like, you guys, my parents. <laughs> so I just said, whatever. We're going to roll the dice, see what happens. Sure. So we get there. First off, as we're leaving, my sister texts me. She says, hey, I'm out and about. If you get home before I do, will you walk my dog? <laughs> I said, hey, unless you're out and about with the Dave Matthews band, you better get your butt home because it's about to go down at Ma and Pa's house. <laughs> <laughs> so we get back to my parents' house, start throwing beer pong, and stuff got weird. <laughs> like weirder than I've already described. Like my sister, who is 30, yes. ended up in her prom dress. I don't know. I don't know how that happened. Oh, no. God bless her for still being able to fit in it, but also <laughs> the hell, right? So uh, we at one point in the evening, I go outside to partake in some uh, illegal activities. And uh, uh, I'm assuming the pot, not, the pot, yeah, not, yes. not murder. Okay. No. <laughs> that's, that's uh, well, murder. we were going to see me. where it went. <laughs> sure. And uh, so Ann's sons come with me. But uh, as it was the middle of the baseball season, the Detroit Tigers could not partake. Right. Sure. Uh, so they had to pretend like it was the playoffs and watch. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, thank you. Thank you. So, uh, read an almanac. So we came back in from smoking, and my dad's downstairs, and he's upset. He's like, what's going on down here? And I said, well, this is uh, half the Detroit Tigers bullpen. And this is Ann Sons from Mumford and Sons. <laughs> and we're playing beer pong. And it was in that moment that I realized my father was no longer sure if he was actually awake. Because <laughs> you got to look at it from his point of view. He walks downstairs. It's the middle of the night. He sees a bunch of weird dudes that he kind of recognizes. And my sister's in her prom dress. Wow. <laughs> like, things are weird. Yeah. And he's just confused. He's just like, uh... Uh, is that Justin Verlander? <laughs> and I said, yes, sir, it is. He goes, I don't know what's happening right now. And he walked upstairs. That was the last we saw of him. Wow. He didn't say, is Kate here? <laughs> no, no, he was just like, what? And the whole next day, I'm freaking out because my parents do a lot for me. I don't even be making them upset over some stupid. Sure. Right. So uh, when dad gets home, I'm completely ready to take him out to dinner, buy him some drinks. And he walks in like he's had the greatest day of his life. And I say, what happened to you? And he's like, well, I woke up this morning and I hated you. Hmm. I cursed your name all the way to work. <laughs> but then I got to work and everyone started asking me why I look so tired and exhausted. So I started complaining about my son bringing home the Detroit Tigers <laughs> and Mumford and Sons and playing beer pong all night. And now I'm the coolest dude in the office. <laughs> <laughs> In my rectum. Uh, it wasn't part of any procedure. He just suspected that his nurse was stealing from him. <laughs> Hi, this is Mike. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. <laughs> I'm Chick McGee. Good morning. Morning to you, sir. And it's time to turn the clock back a little bit. Oh. It's time to take care of some unfinished business. Um... <laughs> Something that happened. At I like this music. Christmas time. Yes. Christmas time. Love Christmas. Christmas oh, time. Oh, really? Now don't uh, don't anybody say what I got you guys for. Maybe he hasn't right. heard it yet. But oh. I got uh, I got Willie his gift, but uh, through uh, because of direct mail and carnivals and uh, oh sure uh, <laughs> le legal firms and uh, the, the cost of parking. Uh, apparently he he was not here for Christmas. So I now was not here. I have given him. His uh, Christmas gift, and he's unwrapping it right now. Are we going? I'm excited. Very I'm excited, excited for you. Too. Yeah, he's going to like that. Yeah, 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 he's going he's to oh, enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. And notice it says, it says Wilbur right yeah. on the box. So I, this is a Chick McGee wrapping need, job. Oh, he's the best. 
I might need scissors, yes. There you go, buddy. This is, uh, I did not plan this out time. When yeah. I wrap a present, it stays wrapped, baby. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, hell, you wrapped that, what, four months ago, three oh, months yeah, ago? Yeah, four months. Yeah, it's still, still, still wrapped. wrapped. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this thing's impressive is what it is. Just as tight today as it was when it was wrapped. Even if mm. it was just the wrapped, I would appreciate it so much. Now I'm going Aww. inside. I'm going to see what's happening. No kidding? All oh, right. Gosh. Well, that's... Uh, that. I don't think anyone else ever said anything. A live bunny. Oh, yeah. Wait a second. Uh Oh, oh, what's going on here? Oh. Uh -oh. Okay, get rid of that thing. Who needs that? So it's about the size of a (laughs) shoebox. Is it a basketball? What is it? Oh, Oh, look at at those. Is that that gold and black for the CU Buffs colors? Yes, it is. is. Yes, sir. (laughs) This This is so thoughtful. I might cry. Thank well, you well, very well, much. Show everybody the, uh, the, Your name's on the, the back. stitched Wilbur in the back. Oh, yes. it, it says Wilbur, so people behind me know what my name is. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Oh, Look dude, at those. Thank you very much. You're welcome, I'm going to wear these tonight. What thank are the colors so for? Uh, Colorado buffaloes. Oh. Black and gold. Yeah. Also, for Peru Boilermakers. Boiler makers. Oh, and yeah. I'll lie yeah. to my grandma, say they're for her. <laughs> oh, right. Well, very inside. Did she go to Purdue? <laughs> she did. She was We're a cheerleader radio. at Purdue. I didn't know that. She was. Wow. Thank you. I'll see you later, Virginia. Yeah. Hang out. My, uh, Hi, my shoes are still on the shelf. I've been waiting for the ideal day. Because they're the nicest shoes I have, so I don't want to wear them on a day where <laughs> there's a chance of rain or Jeff, or snow heavy or wind. Mud or or yeah. I'm exactly this. You should see how mine are displayed in my closet. <laughs> no, I, like, actually, a, like they are like a collectible. Yeah, mine too. Well, mine are in a bag in the car. Nice. <laughs> I've seen you. Uh, I've, I've seen you wear. I wear them a lot. But I do I know like when them. I'm wearing. I do know when I'm going to wear them for the first time. Yeah, yeah. your wedding. Mm-hmm. What? Your, your wedding. wedding. Your wedding. Your wedding. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I have an announcement. <laughs> Jeff yeah. and I are getting married. Oh, oh. so you can each wear your shoes. Yeah. It's I know that you're joking. That would be the most fun wedding of all time. <laughs> That'd be a great wedding. Your would. beards not would really. get tangled. Our beards velcro together. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's just, loops. I'm just, not complaining. Just, just, like that. just makes for longer kisses. <laughs> that would be wonderful. <laughs> you know, I've wanted to get you guys this gift because the, the Nike, the personalization was out there. But t- I decided to myself that two things had to happen. Uh, first of all, that the... Uh, your name had to be stitched in them instead of printed. Yeah, mm-hmm. I thought when they were printed, that was uh, that was low rent. I yeah. didn't care for that. And uh, the shoes had to get cheaper. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, well, the stitching came true. So. Oh, oh I know yeah. you. Uh, yeah. I believe it was somewhere. Beginning of December, you made an announcement to all of us. I spent way too much yeah. effing money on all of you. <laughs> I do remember that. It really, it didn't. I did it over time. When I remembered it, I would order yeah. a pair, and it really started to add up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It There's a really lot of people did. who work here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. you didn't have to give them to you know some of the lessers around yeah. here. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I see. All right. I mean, for the amount that I've been at work, you should. Have gotten me shoelaces. This no, is insane. No, no, no. Your and I think there's another box in there for him, isn't there? Oh, this is yeah. getting oh, out of control. What's going on here? Wait till you see oh, this. He's, he's going to love this one. Yeah, you're going to really like this one. Oh, I don't, I, I'm pretty sure that. Uh, and please notice how that one's are happening. That kitten, there's no way it's still alive. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm surprised the smell isn't stronger. <laughs> I can smell it from That's here. Okay, this, uh, what do we got? Uh oh, it says Willie, it says Funko. Funko. I think this I know what this so is. This is so cool. It has fun right in the name. <laughs> oh, my goodness. The Willie Griswold Funko Pop. That's yeah. great. There he is. That. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm wearing a blue sweatsuit. That's you right. Know, me at an airport. Absolutely. <laughs> Very Absolutely. nice. And uh, everybody got those, too. Yeah, check one Christmas this year. That, I absolutely. did. Last that was, year. That was originally the only gift I was getting everyone. Yeah. And then... Uh, you went overboard, boy. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Something yeah, happened. Something. I don't know. Oh, no. I've uh, I've been using my stove from Christy a lot, too. Oh, yeah. By the way... Um, my solo. I got you a solo stove, but you weren't here. Yeah. And... So now it's Jeff's solo <laughs> stove. <Yeah. laughs> Willie, yes, I didn't get you uh, I didn't get you anything this year because I thought you were dead. <laughs> 
I got bad information. So, so I did half the YouTube chat. <laughs> well, that, I don't know where you That you're explains living. the look on your face this morning when you saw Willie. Uh, I thought it was a zombie. <laughs> I'm happy to get you a stove, but I didn't know where you were living. That is, the or... Solo stove is a great product, but for me, I like a looser fire. I okay. don't want it contained. All right. I want it all over the place. I like cinder blocks around it because cinder blocks, those are just more of a recommendation for where the fire has to sit. Sure, stay. I you get can, that. How I many like times have I said out. that, hey, let that fire be a fire, man. Yes. Don't, don't contain it. No. A fire is only a fire if there's a risk of it jumping. <laughs> the neighbor's roof. The highway. <laughs> yeah. I, those solo stoves are great, though, and it's perfect. It's like about a basketball-sized hoop, uh -huh. so you can just take any aerosol-sized can oh, and just chuck it in. It's a fun game me and the fellas play. You throw it in there, so you get the high score. It's really loud, though, when those pop like that. Have you ever... I've never been... Or I would never. Have you ever taken a Christmas tree and uh, into the backyard and lit it on fire? No. After, after it was up in your house? I bet that goes right up. <laughs> I I haven't either. But, <laughs> but I would guess it really goes right up. <laughs> Almost instantaneously. The word Tinder came to mind. Holy hell. Was that in January or June? <laughs> Christmas Eve. Uh, it might have been February. Yeah. And you remember my uh, one of my Christmas trees. Uh, we have a program here where you're supposed to put it out in a, some sort of bag at the curb, and they'll, there are only X number of days that you can... Uh, and they'll come pick it up and, and make it into mulch. It they make yeah. a big damn, so they claim. Who knows they make a really big doing. damn deal about it. Like <laughs> it could be April. If you yell at the garbage guy enough, he'll do it for you. Like they're doing me <laughs> a favor, okay? I pay for my trash collection. All right, let's start there. <laughs> Okay. So this one of the I I had my Christmas tree in the back and on my way to this job I rolled up to a curb not not that far from here got out of the car rolled it out of my the tree out of the back and threw it into the ditch and drove off <laughs> before like five someone thought you were getting rid of a body it Chick. looked like I was getting rid of a body <laughs> a casual observer would say. He killed that guy, and now he's getting rid of the body. I uh, I burnt my Christmas tree last year, and the neighbors called the uh, fire department on me. Are you and serious? And apparently, you aren't supposed to burn the art artificial ones, only the <laughs> live tree. Oh, yes. There was a lot of black smoke. That's toxic. A horrible, <laughs> a horrible, horrible smell. smell. Yeah. 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 The neighbors were not fans. <laughs> my goodness. Oh, look what time it is. Stupid world record. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Really? <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know, it's a right now that I... We don't have to. I kind of miss him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do. It cuts my workload in half. I, I, yeah. yeah. The City Museum in St. Louis, Missouri. Yes. Have you been there, Jeff? Love it. I have. You yes. have uh, You have a season pass? You no, but I've been. Really? Yeah, it's a fun place. Real fun. We went last year with the kids, and the best part is there's rooms that... The kids disappear into other rooms, and the parents have no idea where they went. And they're too, the parents are too big to crawl through some of the tunnels. So you just hear, Braxton! <laughs> and you just hear from another room, Mommy! And they're like, yeah! yeah. Huh. That's fun. Well, anyway, the City Museum in St. Louis will attempt to break the Guinness World Record for the most people... Wearing underwear on their heads. Well, this is wacky fun. This. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> this is something I can get behind. Yeah. Really? According to the museum, it's looking to add it to its robust record You're collection. Bingo. <laughs> this includes, uh, the, the museum has titles for the world's largest pencil, the world's longest seesaw. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't Archimedes or somebody give me a lever long enough and I can lift the world or something like that? Something, something along those lines. <laughs> and the world's largest tennis racket. Mm. So what underwear would you wear? Uh, I don't Yours. know if would I would wear... Would you wear a ladies? Would I don't you know. wear your own? That's a good... I don't know if I would wear a, a, a ladies underwear. Mm. I'd probably go with clean. That, mm. that yeah, would be good. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, good choice. New. Really. I'd maybe go with the yeah. classic white boxers with hearts. Yeah. Oh, Okay. Funny, yeah. 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 I think I'd wear um, um, girls' uh, underwear if, if that one girl would call. Hey! Probably do. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> in honor of three one four day, that's the area code. All mm -hmm. things St. Louis. Mm -hmm. oh. The museum is hoping to gather <laughs> three hundred fourteen people on March fourteenth and have them all wear underpants on their head for oh. at least a minute. The record to beat is two hundred seventy. Maybe people we should do this right now. 
Should we? Our heads? Can we? Can we do it Zoom? Or do we have to be there? So. Virtually, uh, we have to be there. Probably. You'd have to be there. Mm. Uh, yeah, That's fun. There. What is the fourteenth? Fourteenth is Thursday. A Thursday, definitely a Thursday. No. Yeah, yeah. Thursday. Thursday. This is going to upset all the pie nerds, 3.14, because oh, yeah. that's their day. That so is. now it's oh, the St. No. Louis nerds yeah. versus the pie nerds. This could get really messy. What do we got? We got May May 4th. May the 4th be We got you. pie day. We've got March 4th. That's also a sentence, I guess, right? Yeah. We got, <laughs> talking about silly days? Yeah. Oh, oh. April 15th is uh, choke on it, government. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I say. You know, one year I wrote choke on it on on the check. Are you serious? And then I went, why would I do this? Why, I, I should never. I'm going to be audited immediately. <laughs> Good thing they're understaffed right now. <laughs> I, that's the only reason I think I got away with it. I can't imagine anyone that works there has a great sense of humor. <laughs> nope. They don't. Get a load of this. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, he had some. Get a load of this bad. bastard. I was so mad. We've got his. When address. I lived with four guys, we would take turns who paid the rent each month, and so the other people would write <laughs> checks to you. And then whatever the weirdest thing in the memo you could put for oh. your body. So they had to go and deposit a bunch of, <laughs> like. Oh. oh, like rim job or something? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh. Yeah, that'd be good. Uh -huh. <laughs> but then the next month was going to be someone else, so they were going to get you back. You know, yeah. it was never the same person every month depositing. You could so. use, uh, like, Country Kitchen or something? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Kentucky couple. Kentucky couple. Yeah. <laughs> Pause on that. One. Uh, this is sort of a world record. This Stupid got uh, world record. This was on the international newswire. Aww. Aww. Cole Brower has become the first American woman to race a sailboat alone nonstop around the world. Hmm. Her husband jumped, huh? <laughs> I just want to or... tell you, it's a really uh, amazing and wonderful that you would come with me on this trip. I, I can't yeah, believe sure, yeah. I can't believe that I, I, I didn't want to go here by I'll myself. Be right, I'll be right but back. I you. tell you, it's a really a lonely uh, out oh, here sweetie, just a ocean. Second. Sploosh. <laughs> Sploosh. Honey, honey. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what what sound did you make going in the water? Sploosh. <laughs> That's a Don Martin thing, isn't it? Yeah. Sploosh. Uh, Cole Brower and her 40-foot sailboat traveled about 30,000 miles to compete with more than a dozen sailors in the Global Solo Challenge. Brower was the youngest and only girl in the group that set sail in October from uh, A. Corona, Spain. Hmm. Hmm. She arrived back in Spain on Thursday, March 7th. The race took her 130 days to complete. Wow. 130 days, 30,000 miles. How many miles is that a day, Josh? <sighs> uh, to 26. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? What was it? 30,000 miles in 130 days. What are you guys going to do when it's 26? So you take 130 and divide it by 30,000. That's your problem. You're not going to have to be able to. You yeah, gotta, it's going to be. You got to convert it to the 130 to 1,000. And then. Yeah, point the zero third. zero four three yeah, three three yeah. blah, 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 blah. Next. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll, I'll do my new stand up. I think the one thing we can agree on is we might not ever know how far she traveled <laughs> each day. per day. <laughs> Well, you could do 30,000 divided by 130, and you get 230 oh, yeah. miles. We're doing math. I know. Yeah. And there are eighth graders listening that have already figured this out. <laughs> <Yeah>. Next. <laughs> oh. It was nicer when I said it, wasn't it? I'm yeah. sorry. I, I should have told you. That's sports. It is. Willie literally just rubbed his heart. It, it freaks me <laughs> to out. To soothe your it. own heart. It freaks me out when I hear it, not expecting it. <laughs> it's like when you drink coffee, but you think it's water, and then you get the kick. Does that make sense? <laughs> <laughs> I was just hoping Chick was going to do it mid-sentence. <laughs> this is the new sports theme. Come really? On, let's get it going, Willie. You can keep me rolling. <laughs> Josh is dancing. The three. You know what I mean. You can't help but move. Well, I'll twist for you, baby, and I'll rip for you, baby. Take another shot, get lit for you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I do love the oh yeah part, I tell you. Right, check it, Randy. Randy? Randy. You quit, you don't write checks. <laughs> how do you pay, man? Huh? If you don't write checks, how do you pay these guys? Straight cash, homie. <laughs> Straight cash, homie. Randy Moss? Randy yeah. Moss. 
I had to meet him once. He's Christy. a nice man. Yeah, very nice guy. Very nice Good guy. Good kisser, Christy? I did not kiss him. I uh, actually hung oh. out with his wife. His wife was there. Oh. She's about my size. Good kisser. Oh, yeah. Good kisser. Oh, Min- uh, Mindy? Um, I did not kiss her either. Uh, was it Mindy? Mindy Moss? Mindy Moss. <laughs> I don't remember. And the kids, uh, Mark. They were and, just the uh, two of them. Mark, we were at a- Mark and Mary and... <laughs> Maloicious. <laughs> <laughs> they were on holiday, Is that and they right? were they were hosting. Randy Moss was hosting like a boot camp in the mornings. You could go out and work out with Randy Moss on the beach. No, no, yeah. that's exactly Get right. Really. But you have to pay for that. Yeah. yeah. No, it was all inclusive, so it would be in your. But I would sit on my be balcony and watch them <laughs> while I drank coffee. That's but fine. I'm glad it didn't happen in Kentucky. It was West Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> boy, oh boy, <laughs> from Kentucky. Boy. <laughs> Uh, they have a really good uh, 30 for 30 about Randy Moss. Moss University, right? Moss, my Rand University. Thank you. Yeah, That's and it. Rand is uh, right down there where I used to work, actually. I have a picture of me and him somewhere. Speaking of West that. Virginia. Yes, we're going to be there. Yes, tell us about it. Yeah, my Uncle Denny called yesterday. He's going to be at the comedy show that night. I can't uncle wait to Uncle Denny's going to yeah. be there? We finally get to meet Uncle yeah, Denny? Yeah, you do. Lucky so you guys. have an Uncle Waffle House, too? <laughs> 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 do not make fun of her fine Uncle Denny Perkins. He's a good man, and we will not let you make silly puns. We'll be there on April 5th. We'll do the show live that morning, and then we will have a comedy show that evening featuring Jeff Foskey, Josh Arnold, Willie G, Patty G, and I think your dad and I are hosting. Fun. Yeah. What if Denny gets there and he's just drunk beyond <laughs> No, work. that won't happen. Uh, so anyway, uh, <laughs> you, work, you work with my knees. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Uncle Denny. I'm sure I'll hear about this. She's Let's always been right. a little cutie. <laughs> <laughs> I liked her ever since she was 20. Oh, stop. <laughs> I know. Uh, I know. We better take a break. Yeah, uh, so we'll, can kick all your asses. We'll be uh, <laughs> right back. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. Catch any part of the show you missed later today on our YouTube channel. Hey, it's Josh Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven-baked cheese. It arrives pre-baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skillet, or air fry it. Check out their new oven-baked cheese flavor, jalapeno. Ooey, gooey, spicy cheese. It's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat. Perfect for game day parties or any time. Excuse me, are, um, are you serious with this? I mean, why are you doing this? Me, uh, the real me is right here. I could easily be doing this. We, we don't need you, man. I, uh, look, there's only room for one of us. That's Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese Jalapeno Flavored Oven Baked Cheese. It's now available in Gardner's Oven Baked Bundle Package, so try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh, me the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you. Hey, hi, I'm Tom, this is Chick, that's Josh, and this is Christy Lee. Christy, what's happening? Hey, Charleston, the Bob and Tom Show here and our friends at Rock 105 WKLC are bringing us to town for a live show with special guest. Duke Tomato and the Bob and Tom Brass Mouth Horns Plus. Do not miss an amazing comedy show that night. That's right, it all happens Friday, April 5th at the Charleston Coliseum and Convention Center. If you're listening anywhere within 100 miles of Charleston or Deacon, Come out and see us live on the morning of April 5th. That's a free show. And then get tickets for that night's Bob and Tom Show comedy tour event with who, Christy? Pat Godwin, Josh Arnold, Jeff Oske, Willie Griswold. All hosted by Tom and Christy. Aww. Tickets on sale now and they're going fast. Get your tickets at Ticketmaster.com or the Charleston Coliseum box office. See you there! <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know what Chip McGee does while commercials are playing? I sure would. Tom Show? 
Walk this one. Okay. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Here you go. You're going into the restroom. Well, now this happens sometimes. Sometimes you have to do quick decision making. It's locked. Right. Normally, mm -hmm. everyone who works here knows that they shouldn't be in the bathroom when we're in commercials. Of course. Because I might have to use the bathroom. Number and one. I can't use the bathroom any other time than when we're in commercials. Number one or number two? I'd rather not say. Oh. Well. Hello. Hang on. Your name, please? Chris. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> you taught him his lesson. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Refreshing. <laughs> Wait a minute. Did I fire him? Yeah. Why aren't you gone? Get your sh. Because he has no real power here. <sighs> I knew I had no power, but it still hurts when I hear it out loud. You don't want to say to a naked guy <laughs> There are things you never say When a man is nude I, I didn't mean to laugh There are some things <laughs> You don't want to say to a naked guy Can you help me find it? There are things you never say To a naked dude <laughs> Does that thing come with an air pump? <laughs> I thought you said you had small pox <laughs> really? No, seriously. Really? <laughs> but your feet are so big. <laughs> Aw, that's cute. <laughs> Hang on, I'll get my tweezers. <laughs> Aw, it's like a little light switch. <laughs> For a second there, I thought you had a third nipple. <laughs> I didn't know they could be innies. <laughs> Well, this explains your big car. You don't want to say to a naked guy. Wow, your boobs are bigger than mine. <laughs> Bob and Tom 24-7. Not on air, online, all the time. Bob and Tom 24-7. I got thrown out of J.C. Penney the other day. Really? Yeah, fondling up the mannequins. <laughs> Believe that? And that ain't my fault. Have you seen the mannequins in there? Uh -huh. And they taunt you, too. They got the little short skirt on, arm up, kind of waving you over. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Shoot. I tell you what, if you ask me, the little whore was asking for it. With us in the studio, comedian uh, Kostaki Economopoulos. Now, we talked a little bit about your love life. What's happening with it again? You're... Oh. Oh, I've got a girlfriend. She's great. And mm -hmm. We're knocking around and having a good time. And so you have no children. Though. I have no children. Mm -hmm. Here's here's the first sign of me getting old. All right. Here's the first sign of me as an old guy. I give my girlfriend a really good back massage, like 40 minutes. That's my turn. I lay down. She just barely starts to rub my back. This is true. And she reaches down and, <laughs> and yeah. says, "Are you sure you want me to rub your back?" And I said. Yes. <laughs> Wait, <what? laughs> True enough. Oh my God. What am I, a hundred? Uh, Lowell, Lowell Sanders is here with us. I'm on the road. Uh, are now, you Lowell, are you, are you a single, single man? Yeah, I uh, left a wife in Detroit. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, I see how it works. Police should have found her by now. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. They won't, they won't find her. Ain't no way. You're, you're that good, aren't you? Wow. Bob and Tom. Five. Four. Three. Two. two one. one. <laughs> <laughs> Information. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. We're here. Deal with it. We've got, uh, we've got a follow-up email on a couple of things I might have said uh, in, uh, in anger and disgust and frustration. <laughs> we were talking about Little Debbie's. Yep. Little Debbie snack cakes. Apparently, there's a theme park, if you will, somewhere in Tennessee that has Little Debbie-themed kitty rides, hmm. like Little Merry-Go-Round shaped like an oatmeal cream pie. That's fun. And uh, there's a bronze statue of a Little Debbie... And I made the observation that I'm on to Little Debbie because all the cakes taste the same. Boy, you started a 
war you've, out you've there. You've got the heart shape. you got the tree shape. Right. Mm-hmm. you got all these different shaped cakes for the holidays. The turkey, and they all, it's all white cake with, with cream frosting. Okay. But somebody said, hey, chick, dummy, the same is true of Reese's peanut butter cups. And I'm going to, uh, there's going to be some kickback on it. Yes. Different shapes for the seasons, but the taste is the same. Mm. This no. idiot wrote this. They're wrong. What? I, I could not disagree more passionately. If they're, if they're the same, eat a Reese Christmas tree. Yeah. And then eat a Reese Easter egg. Tell me which one's better, because it's the Easter egg 10 out of 10 times. Right. The problem here is... Um, we're, we're talking peanut butter to chocolate ratio. It's, right. it's yeah. different in those. Oh, thank right. Now, the cakes, yes, they're different shapes, but the ratio of the thickness of the icing to the thickness of the cake is the same. Mm-hmm. Yes. So the shape doesn't necessarily affect the taste. And we all know that Josh is down with the thickness. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, no, down with the thickness. <laughs> 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 Have you, have you seen the grandmother play the drums? Today? She's amazing. Yes. Oh, yeah. she's amazing. Gosh. She goes to the, uh, she acts like she's going to be the church organist. <laughs> she's, yeah, she's phenomenal. I'm here to play the organ. And she tears it up on the, d- <laughs> uh, Christy, what's going on in the news world? Are you done over there? Yeah, yeah, I'm done. Oh, Josh. All, all done, all through. Yep. Hey, new research indicates living near bars and fast food restaurants may have negative impacts on heart health. Well, <gasps> duh. Researchers at Tulane University report people who live near bars showed a 14% higher risk of heart failure, while those who live next to fast food restaurants had a 12% higher risk. By the way, getting into uh, Tulane, uh, yeah. eight lanes. Isn't it, it's one of, one of the world's the... great ironies, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> giant, giant highway. Yes. Yeah. 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 Into... So silly. They had to expand. Yeah. And guess who uh, graduated? Uh, the guys from Pure Prairie League. <laughs> Isn't that Tulane Highway? <laughs> Tulane <laughs> Highway, you're going my way. Have you ever heard that? Yeah, I have. So. Yeah. C- can we make it a rule that when we're working on a highway and we're making it one lane wider, yeah. can we just go ahead and make it seven lanes wider at that time and not have to work on it every <laughs> two years, years and put a new lane in? Hmm. Like, is there a reason? Are too many lanes a bad thing? No. <laughs> exactly. So why aren't they put? Why do you put them in one at a time? Well, put six I, more lanes they in. They run out. You're all there. The concrete's the there. Concrete. You, you just sound like go wider. You sound like you're against infuriating traffic. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that doesn't make any sense to me. I think nature probably there. No, we can't destroy the forest by covering it all up with asphalt and motor cars. There are seven different places in this city that they're working on the road to make it one lane wider. To check local listing. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I don't go out of doors. Yeah, we know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so How many miles do you put on a car a year? Uh, a year? Uh, I don't know. 400. 8,000, maybe. I do that in three months. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's yeah but you live in Kentucky. What are you talking about? You live 15 minutes from Yeah, I know. I put a lot of miles. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. yeah. You guys live together? I, I no, didn't see that No, we coming. live close. But right. I'm a knock on our door. <laughs> Oscar, get out of the bathroom. Oscar's probably been to my house more than any of y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. that right? What's going yeah. on? Uh, Christy gives away a lot of stuff, and I go and take it. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> I help them get dogs. and uh, Dogs yeah. and beds. Yeah. And Anything good? I got a sleep number bed. I got a dog. <laughs> I got... I, she gives away good oh, stuff. We can, I want to live next to Christy. Yeah. What? We can talk to you about your sleep number? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's it's 65. That's amazing. <laughs> wow. Mine? That's mine. Oh, right yeah. on. Well, yeah, you guys go. could, uh, you know... <laughs> Uh, play baseball? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go out in the backyard and have a catch. catch is yeah. right. A little catch? <laughs> play a little catch. <laughs> you dog sat for me before. Oh, yeah, yeah, Jeff and I are buddies. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's right. You told me about her dog. Yeah, he's cr- she's yeah, crazy. Yeah, I gave it back. Yeah. <laughs> You guys are swapping pets? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dog. Oh, the new dog you gave back? No. no, uh, no Nelly's great. The other dog Frankie I gave back Michael. and got a new one. Dog is crazy. 
Oh, yeah. she's going away to school for a while. She is? Yes. <laughs> does, she, does she know she's yeah, military school? School or a big pasture <laughs> with bunny rabbits? <laughs> and it's owned by two, lesbians, for... uh, two lesbians. And uh... <laughs> No, she's actually going to go for, uh, it's called stay and train. Doesn't that sound fun? How long does it last? Three weeks. Wow. Yeah, um, she moves in April 15th. I'm counting down the days. She's going to be... Uh, She's going to be okay. Gonna Guaranteed be, yeah. to be... Um, She'll be fine after that. You going to behave this time? You better. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it, legend is to believe Barney Chandler just has gotten the most important job in England, Chick. Chandler is the newly appointed Raven Master at the Tower of London. Oh, that's cool. Love He's it. Love everything about it. Responsible for looking after the feathered protectors of the 1,000-year-old fortress. <laughs> According to legend, <laughs> if the Ravens leave the 11th century fortress yep. beside the River Thames, the Kingdom of England will fall. Yep. Ensuring the bird's welfare is a huge responsibility for Chandler, a former Royal Marine commando wow. who is one of the tower's famous resident guards known as yeoman warders or beef eaters. A former royal residence in prison, the tower is now a major tourist attraction visited by almost 3 million people a year. It's a cool place. If Don't get... make the mistake of offering uh, the beef eaters asparagus. Or gin. Well, they, they don't they, want it. They eat meat. See. They want mm. meat. <laughs> Carnivores. Okay. Carnivores. <laughs> did you, when you went, Chick, did you do uh, get on that little people mover? Yes. And go look at the family jewels? And, yep. Yeah. And uh, there, we were in a uh, dungeon, and it's been there since, I don't know, 200 or oh. something? I guess it's the royal jewels, not really the family jewels. <laughs> yeah. That would be, diff called, that'd be a different I show. I the crown jewels. Yeah, thank you, the crown jewels. Yes, yeah. Crown jewels. Family jewels. Oh, they were shiny when I saw them. Yeah. Yeah, I think both of what you got are uh, genitalia. Yeah, 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 yeah you're, you're right. They were yeah. shiny. Yeah. Quite a they tour. were shiny. And some <laughs> just got done buffing them. Some were real big. I think we're at the wrong place. You keep touching it, uh, it's going to puke. How do they keep the ravens there? Do they keep? They don't keep them. Do they, they they explain it somehow. And they don't maybe cage you, them, do they? they? No, okay. and maybe you remember. <laughs> They don't. They do just stay in the area. Keeping oh. a raven around is tricky. They gave him the franchise tag, Lamar, for a while. Then they had to pay him millions and millions. Not that raven. Oh, sorry, my bad. My bad. Sorry. Sports is over. It's <laughs> March. Uh, I'm yeah, six. There got to be more ravens than that. Just six. That's what it says here. I don't. I hate ravens. I, I love them, man. I love them too. Hate, and they're so I, smart. I hate the animal. I hate the football team. I think it's dumb that a team's named after a poem. Get out of here, you book nerd. I have the names of the current Tower Ravens. Oh, really? Jubilee. Yeah. Georgie. Georgie's still there. Edgar. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, Branwen. B-R-A-N-W-E-N. Branwen. Branwen. Rex. Branwin. Let's go Branwen. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's a good thing he's not here. You yeah, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> did I say? Did I say Poppy? No, no. Poppy. Poppy and a Harris. A Harris. Oh. Harris. The ravens are intelligent birds, and each of the ravens, it says here on their website, they have their own personality. I bet they mimic sounds, play games, solve problems. They were actually the ones who figured out the Enigma machine in World War II. <laughs> <laughs> really? Isn't that interesting? Amazing! Wow. It's said that the kingdom of the Tower of London will fall if the, yeah. if the six resident ravens ever leave the fortress. I'll be darned. Uh, King Charles is thought to have been the first to insist that the ravens of the tower he protected uh, after he was warned that the crown of the tower itself would fall if they left. What's and the trick to them staying? There's the got to be something. Sort of, uh, I think uh, they uh, if they try to leave, they beat them. <laughs> <laughs> and if they stay, the beating stop. <laughs> And they breed in captivity like that, or I don't whatever it's called. I don't know where the new ravens come from, mm. Mm. but this ra they have a raven on video. Looks like he's being interviewed by a newscaster, and the raven is just sitting there, yeah, listening to questions. Oh no, Branwin looks like a crow to me. I think he's an <laughs> imposter. You think so? I think so. <laughs> There's not a bigger insult for a raven. Oh, <laughs> crows are say they look like crows. Oh, oh. crows are filthy creatures. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Ray Hey, say. when we come back, we'll switch from birds to strip clubs because we have a strip Woo! club story. And we have howler monkeys intercepted. Oh!
<laughs> By customs, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. How'd they find him? Well, they were howling. <laughs> and we'll be right back. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hey, thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. Get a look. Ready and action. Hey, we should wake up every morning with Bob and Tom. That sounds good to me. No problem here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that'd be my fault. The hell was that? Ready and action. Hey, we should wake up every morning with Bob and Tom. Well, that sounds good to me. No problem here. How's it going? Morning. Hey, hold on there, kid. I'm Bob. And I'm Tom. From the Bob and Tom Show. We thought we'd barge in. God. There's a new one. <laughs> hey, kid, hold on there. I'm Bob. And I'm Tom. From the Bob and Tom Show. We do a morning radio show here in town. Here's the deal. We thought we'd break into your house. <laughs> Consarn it. <laughs> Shoot. Darn it. Honey, I'm home. Oh, great. Fish again. <laughs> you know, we can vote you off this commercial. You know, Chick wanted Richard Hatch. <laughs> what if we paid you to say you liked us? <laughs> we can vote you off. Okay. Come way down. And now the news. Oh. You do sports. And now, and now the sports. <laughs> that would be you, Chick. Sports terms that sound dirty, but they're not. No, oh, really. Ready? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Coming in first place. <laughs> Good. Palming the ball. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Taking it to the hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just don't get your holes mixed up. Right. Ooh. Just don't get your holes mixed up. <laughs> Flip the cord over. Flip the cord over. I don't well... want it in my... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's what they're looking for here. <laughs> don't... Christ. All How right. many times have I heard, heard that? that. <laughs> Take two... <laughs> A London homeowner who discovered three men trying to rob his house had no difficulty in describing one of the suspects. He had no legs. Ooh, Ooh usually in crime, it's the... <laughs> <laughs> usually in crime, it's the police that are stumped, not the criminals. I know you guys probably aren't interested, but guess what I did this weekend? I don't know. I don't know. Did you uh, impeach Bush? <laughs> no. B buzz the honey hole? <laughs> no. Flick the minnow? Did you flick the minnow? <laughs> Flicking the old minnow? Oh, Flicking wow. the minnow? Or did you impeach Clinton? Bailing out the gravy boat? Is that what you were doing? <laughs> Finger the fountain? <laughs> Sounds like wow. a wonderful time, but no, I didn't do any of those things. Sorry. Oh, what um, a boring weekend. Yeah, <laughs> Move on. Yes. Bounce the bearded clam? <laughs> <laughs> did you yeah, attend yeah. the clam twiddling jamboree? <laughs> That's it? I That's what I did? I wonder if you to that or not. Yeah, I double dribbled. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did. I uh, just took his only uh, line. <laughs> it's okay. I like to think of Bob as the funny. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Prop, yeah. It's part of the drinking act. I like to think of Bob as the funny one, and I'm more the philosophical one. Ah, really? By the way, you left your headlights on. Socrates. <laughs> <laughs> What's new? Do the other, can you do the other That's line? It? That's it? That's it? That was the <laughs> joke? <laughs> what was That's the other it? Line? This one right here. I think of Bob as the funny one. I'm more of the philosophical one. Really? Well, you shut up and drink your hemlock, please. <laughs> <laughs> 
I told you to be too hip for you. Hemlock, you know. Hemlock. Socrates. What is it? Poison. Let's start with H. You want hemlock? Headlights? What's next? <laughs> Hemorrhoid. Hemorrhoid. <laughs>sexual fantasy associated with the earthquake go all right woke chick up uh-huh. uh, in my fantasy i am making love to this woman yeah and then all of a sudden she feels the earth move beneath her mm. ah yes and then she rolls over on top of me and shields me from debris <laughs> <laughs> safety first everybody safety first hi this is larry reeb uncle Lair. it's a sick world and i'm a happy guy tickets welcome back to the bob and tom show christy lee at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Chick. There's Willie Griswold. Good morning. He's in the house. There's Josh Arnold. Hi there. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. I'm Chick McGee. There's Jeff Oske. Howdy, sir. And I've got uh, more information on the Ravens. Oh, good. At the Tower of London. See, I knew you would love this story, and if I had done this when he was here, he would have never let us talk about it. We were talking there. Evidently, there are, and if the Ravens leave the Tower of London, a king decreed hundreds of years ago that the uh, kingdom of London would fall. England would fall. That's wow. exactly would right. would fall if the Ravens, uh, apparently the... Uh, and Pat asked, how do they keep the Ravens staying at the Tower of London? Right. Well, there is a system. Yeah? The Raven Master occasionally... I am with a little string to a post out in the yard. <laughs> Electric fence. <No. laughs> the Raven Master occasionally trims some of the Ravens' primary and secondary feathers... Oh, oh. sure, yeah. ...to encourage them... <laughs> To stay at the tower. Get their wings clipped. All the tower ravens are able to fly, but with careful feather management. Plenty of food and a comfortable new enclosure. It says here on the tower website, yeah. the ravens are happy to call the tower their home. Oh, I'm they sure live they the are. lives of uh, luxury there, yeah. However, some ravens have gone as- absent without leave in the past, and others have been fired. Fired? Raven Mune... <laughs> Flew off to Greenwich and was eventually returned by a vigilant member of the public after seven days. Wow. Raven Georgie dismissed for eating television aerials. <laughs> <laughs> and Raven Grog, oddly enough, was the last seen outside in a pub in the East End. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. He's a wild guy. Asking for change. And Are old, they microchipped? How do you know which ravens go to the I, Tower of London? I would think they'd have to be microchipped. <laughs> they have the little crown embossed on their fingers. That's or right. Something. <laughs> I'd like to see a raven wearing a little tiny crown. <laughs> hey, how you doing? The ravens are fed twice a day by the uh, raven master mm-hmm. and dine on a special diet of mice, chicks, Rats and assorted raw meat. Ew. And as a special treat, the ravens are given biscuits soaked in blood. 
How about oh. that? Oh. How big are they? They're uh, big, man. Eight feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> like a hawk or a falcon. Oh. And they're oh. they're said to have the strength of four men. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I I'm, I want to go back there. Now. One will take your eye I out if he really wants now. to. Oh yeah. He can, he can talk you into giving. Your eye to him. That's how smart ravens are. Mm -hmm. One will push your wife down a staircase. <laughs> yeah, for 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, did he pay the owl 20 bucks to do it? <laughs> well, that's a wacky story, isn't it? I think that happened. I think the owl you really did, did it. You yes. really think the owl did it? I think that Colin Firth wouldn't do that. No. Well. Goodness, no. That, what? Why did they put him in that movie? I know. I, mm -hmm. I didn't want that. Yeah, have you seen the actual documentary of that whole story? Mm -mm. I've only seen that. I've not seen the dramatization. Yeah. Oh, you've not seen the Colin Firth film? No. no. You Pretty know, good. when they were casting that movie, they uh, put Colin in Firth. <laughs> he was Firth cast? He was Firth cast. He was yeah. Firth in line. Firth in line. <laughs> Firth. Firth in line. Pat, you ready with a song over there? Only if everybody's going to sing along. What oh, are you going to yeah. play? How about you do that, uh, that story about the mammoth? About oh, the, the woolly mammoth. Is that a woolly uh, Yeah, woolly it gets everybody going. <laughs> Hold on. I well, there's only one kind. Mammoth. There's only really one kind of mammoth. When you've said uh, <laughs> this mammoth, you've said it all. What <laughs> scientists are one step closer to resurrecting the woolly mammoth. Stop this. Colossal Biosciences, yeah. a company hoping to resurrect extinct species, oh. announced this week it had created... Uh, pluripotent stem cells for the closest living relative of the woolly mammoth, Asian go. elephants. Yes, sir. Geneticist George Church said the milestone is probably the most significant step in the early stages of the project. And according to NPR, scientists can now try to use cloning techniques and gene editing to manipulate the cells in the hopes of someday well, creating uh, elephants with the key traits of mammoths. Well, well, you see, you were uh, so busy asking uh, if you could. <laughs> you didn't bother to ask if you should. Oh, Thank you, Nicholas. Really I good. am Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> He's also been working to bring the dodo bird back, too. I am all. Dodo bird. I peck. My pecker's on my face. <laughs> <laughs> Dodo bird. <laughs> you got an a elephant song, Pat? An elephant song? Yeah. You mean a mammoth song? Yes. Uno, dos, one, two, Susie Quattro. <laughs> yeah. You better stop messing. In the lab after dark Leave the DNA alone Remember Jurassic Park What a mama A woolly mammoth A woolly mammoth A woolly mammoth A woolly mammoth All right, watch me now Oh, yeah The Lophosaurus ain't Newman <laughs> But not Sam Neill Sam Neill wasn't tested, <laughs> had no T-Rex appeal. Woolly mammoth, woolly mammoth, woolly mammoth, woolly mammoth, woolly mammoth. Woo! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> watch me now, watch me now. It's a crazy song. Uh, woolly bully. Remember who who did that? Sam, Sam the Sham. Sam the Sham and the Pharaohs. Oh, mm -hmm. that's right. Yes, or as, if Tom were here, he'd say the Pharaohs. Uh, he, he sure would. He'd sure. he he explain uh, American Graffiti. Yeah, that's uh, right. Harrison Ford was a carpenter. Uh, right? uh, yeah. <laughs> I hey. like it when you do it. <laughs> a French dude discovered a nearly intact dinosaur skeleton while out walking his dog recently. Nearly. Yeah, Damien Bochetto, it's all for you, a member Damien. of the Association uh -oh. of Culture, Archaeology, and Paleontology, was w just happened to be walking his dog, Muffin, when he saw bones <laughs> poking out of a partially eroded cliff in Montier. Oh, them bones, them bones. Bochetto and the ACAP decided to keep the find a secret for two years to protect the site while they set up several 10-day excavations that ultimately uncovered dinosaur skeletons that were almost completely intact. Many of them. Yeah, they ultimately uncovered a 33-foot-long fossil of a... <laughs> you got this, girl. No, Sound it out. Uh, a, t a titanosaurus. Ah. Yeah. Oh, a, a titanosaurus. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. The bones have since been taken to the Cruzy Museum, where they will be stored and exhibited. That's where you go through in your car. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. 
I think a little muffin dip, dug up a bone and then they... Yeah. Wow. And he just happened to be an archaeologist. What are the odds of that, huh? And they, they didn't have to figure out how the bones go back together. They were all still together, right? Yes, okay. nearly all intact. Well, I guess... They know how they went together if they if they happen that way. Yes, point. they yeah. know. They, but if you can't tell me that they, they find a, a piece of bone and they can reconstruct an entire dinosaur. They absolutely can. No, I'm because, quit messing with the bones. I Those are meant to be so. there. Don't mess with them anymore. What? No, no, we need to study them. No, we shouldn't mess with them. We shouldn't mess with the woolly mammoths. We shouldn't just leave them. We should not be cloning woolly mammoths. I agree. This That's has got a curse written all over it. Yes. Oh. Do you never see the mummy? I've sure never seen did. a dinosaur mummy. Have you? I don't think there is a dinosaur mummy. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm not afraid of being cursed by these bones. You think dinosaur mummies don't have curses? Is that what you're saying to me? I I'm, so I'm, no, no, I'm saying you there are no dinosaur mummies. Correct. That's what I agree with that. Thank you. <laughs> no, we won't have to have mummies because they're bringing the woolly mammoth back. <laughs> Intact. The Egyptians didn't live here during the dinosaur period. Oh, I do have a question. What are we oh, talking yeah. about? I have no idea. <laughs> Colin Firth, I think. Oh, I could talk all day about Colin Firth. He He's right first. up there. Wait, people didn't He's live with the dinosaurs? The Nobody was around when they were around? Mm, that's, well, not been uh, that's not been proven. That's not been proven. You couldn't ride a raptor that. if you got a big enough saddle? You couldn't get on there and hang out with the fellas? Uh, no. Have you ever seen... There is an old movie out there where cowboys are riding dinosaurs. <laughs> have you di ever seen uh, that thing? Cowboys and aliens? No, it's like oh. way older. It's black and white. I remember that. And there's like a cowboy on a saddle riding like a T-Rex. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Are yeah. you sure? I'm positive, yes. Huh. That's something. Oh, it'll bring a smile to your face. <laughs> <laughs> well, you remember Cowboys and Aliens with uh, Daniel Craig? Was yeah, that was that? a wild I movie. did see that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, 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 you didn't care for it, I it's can tell. Cal somehow they made a movie called Cowboys and Aliens, and it's boring. <laughs> How did they do that? And they, it's almost like they put like 30 or 40 uh, names of something in a hat and they drew out cowboys and uh, that's the name of the it, it should have been the it. most fun ever yeah it's just nothing ah uh, sorry about that <sighs> well, i'm gonna watch it this afternoon at home while my oh. compound's locked down with my simply safe home security system you know that about mm -hmm. me days are getting longer the fbi reports the property crime data most home break-ins happen in broad daylight experts and customers love simply safe comprehensive protection just named Best Home Security System of 2024 by U.S. News & World Report and Best Customer Service in Home Security by Newsweek. Advanced technology protects every room, window, and door of your home. With cameras keep watch. Sus suspicious activity. Something going on out there 24-7. Backed by 24-7 professional monitoring for less than a dollar a day. And, oh, yes, those are high-definition cameras you'll get the emergency response you need and no long-term contract ever it's easy to install the system yourself or you can have their professionals do it test it for yourself simply saves 60-day risk-free trial if you don't love it which i've never heard of you can return it return it for a full refund protect your home today bob and tom show listeners of course get a deal a special 20 percent off any New Simply Safe system when you sign up for Fast Protect monitoring. Just visit simplysafetom.com. That's simplysafetom.com. Remember, there's no safe like Simply Safe. We'll be right back with uh, news. Yeah, we have a strip club patron battered with cash, and we have. Um... <laughs> they hit him with nickels and quarters. <laughs> we'll find out. All right. Okay. And a wayward pig named Kevin Bacon. Come on up. Oh, you got to name a pig, Kevin. Bay. We'll be right back. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hey, it's Josh Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven-baked cheese. It arrives pre-baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skillet, or air fry it. Check out their new oven-baked cheese flavor, jalapeno. Ooey, gooey, spicy cheese. It's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat. Perfect for game day parties or Anytime. Excuse me. Are um, are you serious with this? I mean, why are you doing this? Me, uh, the real me is right here. I could easily be doing this. We we don't need you, man. I uh, look. There's only room for one of us. Ah!
That's Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese Jalapeno Flavored Oven Baked Cheese. It's now available in Gardner's Oven Baked Bundle Package, so try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh, me the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you. Tom, this is Chick, that's Josh, and this is Christy Lee. Christy, what's happening? Hey, Charleston, the Bob and Tom Show here and our friends at Rock 105 WKLC are bringing us to town for a live show with special guests. Duke Tomato and the Bob and Tom Brass to Mouth Horns Plus. Do not miss an amazing comedy show that night. That's right. It all happens Friday, April 5th at the Charleston Coliseum and Convention Center. If you're listening anywhere within 100 miles of Charleston or if you come out and see us live on the morning of April 5th. That's a free show. And then get tickets for that night's Bob and Tom Show comedy tour event with who, Christy? Pat Godwin, Josh Arnold, Jeff Oske, Willie Griswold. All hosted by Tom and Christy. Oh. Tickets on sale now and they're going fast. Get your tickets at Ticketmaster.com or the Charleston Coliseum box office. See you there! <laughs> This room just got so much more handsome because in the studio on his way to the legendary Go Bananas in Cincinnati, Ohio, it will be Greg Hot. He's right here with us. Hey, Greg. Hey, I'm all excited. Thanks for having me here, everybody. So, yeah, hey, it's man. Friday. Come on. <laughs> Go to your boss's office and say, what this company needs is a trampoline. <laughs> <laughs> you know me. I've got volume control issues. Give me a hand. I was born eight and a half months early. Come on. You know Whoa, me. That is Comedy's early. not my thing. Let's go. Friday <laughs> starts the week. <laughs> I'm the guy that invented peel and eat shrimp. Come on. Uh, <laughs> Look for me in my new show. I'm the star of Dog Walker, Texas Ranger. Check it out. <laughs> Animal Planet. <laughs> I you got to wake up pretty early in the morning. Outsmart me. How early? 8.30 ought to do it. Come on. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Greg Hott is here with us. Hey, Greg, how are you, sir? Looking, I'm great. Looking right. very, very handsome. Uh, Greg, of course, a uh, veteran of the Marine Corps. Ah, hit him in the head. We don't have all day. <laughs> <laughs> Too slow. Get back. As you can see. Uh, <laughs> My new thing, Tom, is acting. Oh, I'm actor. a great actor. I didn't know this. I'm a great I've been going to acting classes. Oh, do a scene for me. I kid you. Okay, well, I gave uh, Chrissy some lines. You did? Oh. oh and we'll okay. do our acting scene. Okay. I've, been ta I've taken like over 20 hours of acting wow. classes. Wow. Wow. Kidding you not. All right, we're going to do a scene. Go ahead, Chrissy. Go ahead. Greg, right. you're yeah. unapproachably handsome, and it's impossible not to dream about you. Why don't you just do the lines, Christy? We well, can talk about this after it. the show. <laughs> do the bit. Try the second line. Do the second. You're on for, Okay, forget the first. Do the second line. <laughs> but, Greg, when you walk past me and my girlfriends with your totally realistic hair color, how could we be expected not to fling our clothes against the wall? Just do. Can we do some comedy? That's what I mean. Do, do the stuff I put. Read what I wrote. I read. All right, what forget you it. Tom, what's in the news? She won't forget do it. it. She won't do it. Here, give me the. Let me give me the lines. Let me try. That's what is written. No, on just give page. me the. Give me the paper. You read it. Okay. I think what Greg, what Greg is suggesting here. She's obviously in love with Greg. All right. She's exactly. Yes. Obviously. She won't even do the bit. No, no she won't. She can't help herself. She's too yeah. hung up on you. It's embarrassing for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone.
one, you know? Uh, it's a blonde thing. I don't understand. <laughs> Bob and Tom, you can pick your morning radio show, and you can pick your no. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. We're all here, Tom, on assignment. Coming up Thursday, March 28th, that's opening day for the Cincinnati Reds, and we will be... Live that morning doing the radio show at Bet MGM Sportsbook at the Banks at the Nation Kitchen. Now, uh, admission is free, but space is limited. First come, first serve as far as getting in to watch the, the radio show that morning. First 200 guests in line are guaranteed a spot to see the show. So uh, we start at uh, 6 a.m. Eastern Daylight time. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. That's oh, no, this no, no, no. weekend, yes? Uh, no. this weekend. That was it Saturday or Sunday? Now, this <laughs> weekend, we, <laughs> Sunday morning, 2 a.m. We moved to Eastern Daylight Time. And okay. Spring we're, forward. We're in Cincinnati, confusing. March 28th. Now, in Arizona and Hawaii, oh. I'm still an a-hole, right? <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget, Friday, it's the uh, Chick McGee goes home. At last, he's returned to Charleston, West Virginia, mm. sort of. Uh, it's um, Friday morning, April 5th. Well, well, well. Look the prodigal here. son yes, returns. Look at you. <laughs> oh, I okay. hope seven people call you Hollywood. What's going on? <laughs> How's X Rock 13? I don't even think it's on the air anymore, actually. Uh, Friday morning, April 5th, uh, we're celebrating Rock 105's 44th anniversary. 6 a.m. to 10 a.m., we're going to be doing the morning show at the Charleston Coliseum and Convention Center. Admission is free. It don't cost nothing. I'll be there, big shot. <laughs> big shot. <laughs> uh, Look, also, he came back. Duke Tomato and the uh, Bob and Tom Brass to Mouth mm -hmm. Horns will be there that morning. And then Friday night, it's the Bob and Tom uh, Comedy Tour. Uh, tickets are on sale right now at Ticketmaster.com or the Char uh, Charleston Coliseum box office uh, with some uh, comedians. Uh, you know who they are. So, <laughs> tail between his legs. Uh, there he is. <laughs> no, uh, uh, Jeff Oske is going to be there. Yeah. Uh, Josh Arnold. Uh, Willie Griswold. And I'm not going to go long this time, everybody. I promise I won't. I would like to put a money bet on that. <laughs> Like the over under thousand dollars. Over under is forty two minutes. Forty two. How minutes. over were you last minutes. time? I think just five minutes. I always uh, go a little. And Pat Godwin will be. Uh, Pat Godwin. Pat yeah. Godwin. You're going to be there. Yeah. Really? Huh? Oh. Damn. That sounds like a show. Ooh. So see us there. Yes, please. Christy, what's going on over there? Well, thank you for asking, Chick. You're welcome. A stripper in Florida was arrested for allegedly hitting a patron with a, quote, stack of cash. <laughs> Police were called to Body Talk, a topless club in Port St. Lucie. Let's name it uh, Body Talk. Let me hear your Body Talk. <laughs> Where the victim said the woman was upset. Um, women were upset because he had not provided them any tips. Uh, yeah. The yeah. arrest affidavit notes was a common practice apparently at this establishment. The 28-year-old suspect, a lady, Miss Victoria Jones, told sheriff's deputies that the man was drunk and had verbally assaulted employees. So she admitted to picking up a small stack of money and throwing it towards the victim who was struck in the face. Good. Security footage also showed her following up with an open hand strike. Whoa! Yeah. And she was arrested for battery. Mm. Mm. Is this part of the um, tip rebellion, you think? Uh, for not in the, I don't think in this case. Uh, I think it's always been. To. If you're sitting at the stage, sure. you should be tipping. You should right. be tipping? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Hey, well, Chick, how do you feel about this? I went to a concert, saw Jason Isbell last week. Yeah. And when you get a drink, they have a little iPad. You can tip for the yeah. drinks. But also at the merch table, buying T-shirts, buying hats, you can tip there too. I did not tip. I still feel a little bad about it. Mm. No, don't. Not at the right? merch. No. Yeah. No. Not at the merch table. They're charging fifty dollars for a T-shirt. No, I know. Come mm. on. Yeah, I don't know how to feel about all this uh, tipping. Extra tipping. Just tip when you feel you want to, and don't if you feel you don't. Yeah. Okay. Aren't you afraid you're going to be treated badly, though, the next time you go? Or? I don't. I, I don't think I'm guilty of not tipping when I should. That's okay. the thing. So. I, I, I tip well. Do you tip on carryout? I do, yeah. Oh, and, well, it's set up so you can tip on uh, carryout with the, with oh, the yeah. app. And I'm, and I'm a little, I have a problem with tipping before the service, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. <laughs> but that's what I do. Yeah. And uh, I'd rather tip for the service as opposed to, but 
I still tip. I, I tip well. I mm-hmm. tipped when they delivered it to uh, the house across the street. I have still. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. I mean, what do what, what, yeah. you yeah. Come on. They're still working yeah. hard. And Josh, just- he always tips so well. Whenever we're doing work on the road together, he puts $5 bills down on the table, and he tells the server, if you do a good job, uh-huh. you'll get all these. But one mistake, he takes a dollar away. I like to see their eyes when I pull them away. Uh-huh. I, uh, you didn't call me, Late. sir. <laughs> You when I was I a waiter, I had a, a couple do that to me, Willie. Oh. No. Put five singles out on the table, and they go, you keep up the service, you get all of this. Yeah, that's... So wow. I, by the end of their meal, had zero dollars on the table. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Yeah, sure. I mean, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Somebody yeah. did that? Yeah. In a serious way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I remember seeing they... that in, like, a movie one time, and I told my dad, I was a kid, and I go, I'm going to do that. And he goes, don't ever do that. <laughs> Yep. At the uh, Outback Steakhouse, when whoa. Jeff was a server. No, uh, well, there's no rules there, so you don't have any. Well, they, yeah. yeah, I had no repercussions, That's but right. there are no rules just right. <laughs> so. You do a good job there, though. Yeah. Oh, you no, really I do. enjoy it. Oh, this wasn't, yeah, this it was It wasn't a problem with the restaurant. It yeah. was a problem with the customer sure. who came in. Him and his wife, they would come in every Friday night and do that. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Oh. You of course, this to- was 1972, so $5 was a lot. Oh, that was like 80 bucks now. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah. U.S. Customs and Border Protection officers in Texas caught a man allegedly trying to smuggle howler monkeys into the country. <laughs> Officers encountered the 29-year-old man trying to enter the United States at the Brownsville and Matamoras International Bridge in a pickup truck. During a secondary inspection, the officers and agriculture specialists discovered two live howler monkeys in the truck. The driver was taken into custody. The animals were seized and will be housed at the Gladys Porter Zoo in Brownsville, Texas. Here's uh, four howler monkeys. They look like they're a quartet singing. Oh, that's great. For the long <laughs> well, they've got a the word uh, howler monkey has to come from somewhere. They have oh, they howl. to howl. Yeah. They, they do. Gotta, they do we ha- can we hear a howler monkey? Yeah, I, don't I don't. I don't know what a howler monkey sounds like. I'm, and they're they're not small. They're not easily smuggable. Smuggable. Yeah, smuggable. smuggable. Yeah. I like smuggable. <laughs> smuggle. Do you have a song, Pat? I know what a howler monkey sounds like, though. I could give oh. you. A, oh, oh, okay. Good. All right. Then I saw her face. I'm a. Bl- oh! <laughs> Man, hi, it's like a G. It's a G. It's a high G. It is a high G. That's people monkey. Oh. <laughs> See, there's Davy and Peter mm-hmm. and Michael. And well, there was. Yeah, wasn't the there? Yeah. And there was one. <laughs> and Michael Nesmith is still out there, right? Is he touring? Uh, oh, not, no, not Mike no, Desmond. Mickey. Mickey, Mickey, Mickey Dolan's, Dolan's is still out there. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Mickey, Mickey Dolan's is still out there. Yeah. We yeah. were all thinking, how we how do we tell him Michael Nesmith? No, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey Dolan. How, is he, he's on tour, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, he's, he's, doing, he's doing those songs. Mickey Dolan's is, of course, by himself. He's oh, not, he is? He's still doing the stuff. Huh. Here I come, <laughs> walking down the street. Uh-huh. I personally get the funniest looks from yeah, right. everyone I meet. Yeah. Hey, hey, I'm a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> that is is a shitty Boy, monkey. I loved that show when I was a kid. Oh, I, I saw them live it. and loved it. I, I saw them live and loved it. I thought that show was the funniest thing I'd ever seen <laughs> in my life. Oh, yeah. I did too. I loved that show. Yeah. Like a, the monkey, it's like the Beatles by committee, right? Like an American record producer, like, made yeah. our own little version yeah. of yeah. the game. Right. But they weren't terrible. That's the no, thing. The like, it worked. Good. Yeah. I remember in the credits, they, didn't they ride a bike into the ocean? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They just go yeah. ride yeah. over the water? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they sure <laughs> did. Well, how about that? <laughs> that sounds good. But well, they yeah. were, I, yeah, I stand by, they're decent songs. Yeah, you know? they are. I mean, Ten-year-old Christy had Davy Jones uh, sing to her as an adult. I was an adult, but my 10-year-old heart was just beating so fast. We were at Disney World. He was right as close as you and I are. He was singing right at me. Oh, Willie. Right oh. To your how, old were, how old were you? No, I loved him when I was 10, but I oh. saw him as an adult, oh. and so that 10-year-old love, oh. you know, that yeah. girly girl crush thing Daydream came out. But of course, your 45-year-old oh. vagina <laughs> <laughs> came right back. Yeah. Yeah. No, kind of no, overpowered it that. It became a 25-year-old vagina. <laughs> Wow! Wait a minute, hold it. It it, it can do that? <laughs> if Davy Jones shows up. Yeah. <laughs> On the right hormone therapy, it can. Wow. Anyway, um... <laughs> oh, I had to make a hormone, uh, Josh. Uh, d- don't don't tip her? That's right. Something right. like that, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. Nice. Ride her a check. A wayward pig named Kevin Bacon was caught 
hamming it up for security cameras at a Wisconsin home. The 450-pound pig wandered I from his I am not. Pen. I'm 320 if <laughs> I'm, I'm a pound. I'm big pig bone. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Who are you calling This was in Kenosha County last week. Jake Molgard said security cameras at his Brighton home captured an unusually shaped figure walking along the garage and coming up to their front door. <laughs> Molgard said his wife started feeding the unexpected visitor right away before they set to work on trying to find his owner. Mm. A friend contacted them with the pig's owner, who was out of town, but asked the couple to lure Kevin back to his pen with his favorite sweet treats. Armed with snacks and sheriff's deputies, the mole guards led Kevin down a trail along a side road to safely get the pig back so, home. So if you own pigs, can you just uh, treat it like a cat when you got to go out of town? You just leave it in the pen and it, it'll be fine? I'm sure yeah. that they have... Well, they have ranchers, I bet that came and checked on them every day they're also incredibly intelligent yes oh so they can make themselves sandwiches and things yeah yeah <laughs> they can drive to the grocery pig, store making a blt leave Come themselves on. out of the deep part <laughs> <laughs> they go to the grocery store they hate piggly wiggly though yeah yeah it's very insensitive take a left here take I'm not he going always to takes wiggly. a left here take a left here <laughs> yes yes <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as we continue to uh, break new barriers in the broadcast world, yeah. I now present a howler monkey. Oh. Are you ready? Yeah. That's, that's, that's insane. That's a monkey? They're smuggling howler monkeys, and this is the sound they make. Kind of hard to hide that. I'm sorry, I had a really bad sandwich <laughs> earlier. I haven't had anything to eat since Chicago. I'm sorry. I... This is embarrassing. That's the exact same noise I make orgasming. <laughs> Funky monkey. Uh, what? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. If I close my eyes, I can picture it, Josh. This is don't. very inside, but that's the same noise my dad makes after he drinks a coffee. Yeah, we've heard it. Yeah, it kind of is. Yeah. 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 That second dad's... gear he goes into. Yeah. That's your dad's yawn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> After a couple secret lattes, he makes that noise. Yeah, what if you were just walking through the jungle and you heard that? <laughs> okay. Jesus. I'm running through the jungle. Yeah. You better run yeah. through the jungle. <laughs> run through the jungle. Yes. Howler monkeys. So we had a pet pig lo uh, lost in Wisconsin. Kevin Bacon. And real thought, quick, oh. what's a funnier name for a pig? Is it Kevin Bacon or Notorious P.I.G.? I that... like Notorious P.I.G. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mm. Just checking. How about That's this? Cute. Here's the howler monkey. And here's Tom yawning. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, I'm running through the jungle. Yeah. Yeah. Either way, I'm out of here. You hear this in the jungle. <laughs> it sounds up, like man. I'm being summoned by an angel. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. That is an interesting take. Tarzan's partner. <laughs> we should we should remind people that is a real Tom yawn yeah. recorded without his knowledge. Yes. We secretly recorded him yawning one morning, and this uh, honestly, this has not been embellished or changed nope. in any way. That's what he does. <laughs> and that's only one of like six weird noises he'll yeah. make. Yeah. It's, I mean, what's the weirdest noise? There's that one. There's the heartburn noise. Oh. Yeah. Um, there's the, yeah, there's the sneeze the cough. The sneeze cough. When he, yeah. kind of, huh, when he yells. <laughs> and then now the, the get up noise that he makes when he has to get up because his knees are hurting. He goes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes he's getting up. He changes gears. It's insane. <laughs> Authorities in Arlington, Texas, didn't have to worry about a pig on the loose. They had goats to corral. Mm. 200 that escaped their enclosure. 200? Yeah, KDFW. <laughs> um, Department of uh, Fornication Works. Nice. Reports <laughs> goats came, uh, got out of the Crystal Canyon <laughs> natural area and were oh. spotted roaming the streets of Arlington. I've heard of Crystal Canyon. A mm. team of Arlington police officers were responded to the scene. That's a porn star name for sure. Oh, oh yeah. Crystal absolutely. Canyon? Yeah. Yeah, they... mm. Managed to wrangle the animals and bring them back to their enclosure. It's unclear how they escaped, but officials believe hikers moved a fence. The city of Arlington has partnered with a company to bring hundreds of goats to the Crystal Canyon Natural Area to eat 
underbrush and invasive plants to the park and to clear waterways and reduce fire risk. Okay. And a total more than 400 goats are part of their city project. Wow. Yeah. Have you seen you can now rent goats? They bring goats to your yard if you have like a big uh, poison ivy patch that you need like taken out. Uh, they will bring goats to your house, and they put, like, a little fence around the poison ivy patch, and the goats will eat all the poison ivy. No wow. way. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I saw that you could rent a truck full of sheep. <laughs> yeah? U-Haul. <laughs> E-W-E. Yeah. 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 E -W -E. We got it. <laughs> Not everybody did. I didn't you know. hear Ace What's it cost C to rent a goat? C minus. Well, it's not just a goat. They bring out like a whole pack of goats. And like if you have like the back of your yard is like overgrown. Right, and you want, right. They bring out a whole pack for a couple of days and they eat it all. Oh, that's pretty awesome. That is yeah. awesome. It's a... An Nature. herbicide way of getting rid yeah. of some plants. But apparently goats love poison ivy and poison oak, and they'll eat it all up. Huh. And so you don't oh. have to deal with it yourself. Wow. Yeah. I've never heard you of You know, the Los Angeles Rams, uh, the National Football League team, uh, They their cheerleaders used to be called the Embraceable U's. Oh. oh really? E-W-E. Yeah, I don't know if they're still called that, but I'm certain that they used to be called that. Absolutely. That's kind of sweet. So U's are more rams, not sheep? Right, right, not sheep. I apologize. That's so why funny. Ace wasn't laughing. At your That's team. why I got the C minus. Ace, <laughs> yeah. I, I deserved it on a technicality. <laughs> yeah. Technicality for me. We have more silly news coming up. Let's see. Uh, did we talk about the charges being dropped in that Don Henley case? They did do that. No, it's oh. boring. Yeah, yeah, it is boring. Yeah. Oh, Don um, Henley's a wonderful individual, a statesman. <laughs> <laughs> Eagles Dolly, can do no wrong. Dolly Parton and her sister have a cookbook coming out. They do? Yeah, I bet What's that's sweet. What's her sister's look like? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. I felt someone. Not had what's to, her uh, name. I, no, I have somebody. One Everybody of the guys was thinking it. Had to say it. Everybody. Everybody I mean, because if there are four of them out there, all thinking it. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. The and Bob and Tom mom. Show oh. Oh. is sponsored by our good friends at BetterHelp. That's right. Yes. If there's something out there that's got you down, or if you just need a boost in your life, why not check out BetterHelp? If you have an extra hour in your day, how would you use it? Read a book. Go to the gym. Maybe visit a friend. Well, your best way to squeeze that something special into, into your schedule is to know what's important to you and make it a priority. How do you find that out? Well, talking to somebody is such a wonderful thing. Therapy, it helps find what matters to you. If you're thinking of starting therapy, you can give BetterHelp a try. It's all done online, designed to be convenient and flexible to your schedule. You just fill out a brief questionnaire. You'll get matched with a licensed therapist right there online. And if it's not really working for you, and a lot of us have been in this position, don't feel bad. You can always switch therapist anytime for no additional charge. BetterHelp. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash BT Show to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash BT Show. Kevin Nealon will be our guest here coming up uh, next hour. And also, uh, sooner than that, uh, we'll talk with uh, one of our favorite guests. Who's that? A Mr. Jeff Oski. Oh, that will weigh in. On the events of the world. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Just got to get up. So we'll do this song about drunk sex. Huh? All right, that's okay. good. Well, Sweet. in that case, uh...
back in the NFL? Well, if you're on your feet all day like I was, you get the struggle. The secret is orange insoles. Their insoles are like magic for your feet and body. They'll help you kick hip pain, sore feet, and lower back discomfort to the sidelines. Feel better, do more with orange insoles. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm depressed that I'm not depressed. I don't know. But I like depressed people. They're they're easy to be around. Yeah. Right? Very low maintenance. Right. Uh -huh. My girlfriend in college, she's depressed, and I used to ask her, I go, "Hey, what do you want to do today?" She's like, eh, "Nothing." I'm like, "Done." <laughs> so weak. All right. I felt like a provider. Uh, <laughs> <that's fun. laughs> that was great. Yeah. Uh, the hyper people make me. Uh, Anxious, like, because they uh, people assume I want to do whatever they want to yeah, do. Let's like, go hiking, let's go backpacking, yeah. let's go ride bikes. Oh, that's be, oh. that'd be great. Do you do those things? <laughs> no, my, my oh. least favorite question when someone asks you, they don't even tell you what they got lined up. They're like, What are you doing tomorrow morning? I'm like, uh, Screening your call. Yeah, on November 15th, 1864, Major General William Tecumseh Sherman began his famous march to the sea. Sherman led his troops from Atlanta, Georgia, to the ocean port of Savannah. As he was leaving, Sherman set the city on fire, gutting 40% of it. Atlanta wouldn't be burned this badly again until they gave their franchise tag to Michael Vick. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, this is Augie. Back to the Bob and Tom Show. 
We're all here. Christy and Josh, Ace. There's Willie Griswold. Hey, man. Pat Godwin. Hey there. We have not done the Ace Cosby joke of the week. Our day. <laughs> Wishful thinking. <laughs> Might be coming up. But, oh, oh, ladies and gentlemen. Holy cow. Jeff Oske joins us via television, even though he was just <laughs> sitting in here. But we're... I not, had to go to the newsroom, baby. I understand that, yes. It's uh, got all form. Yes, we got it. <laughs> uh, also, uh, luckily, Willie's here today because our new sponsor, once again, uh, they're, they're back for more. Willie's Waterbed Warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> we buy it here. We fill it here. That's Willie's Waterbed Warehouse. Uh, for an extra $200, he will fill your waterbed with mineral water. Oh, uh, yeah. Check that out. That's www.www. <laughs> Willie's Waterbed Warehouse. Jeff, that was a little triggering because right now you're wearing my dad's old shirt and a tie that doesn't match. I feel like you're my dad at my eighth grade graduation. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, I'm kind of proud of you, Willie. There. Does that sound... <laughs> all right, we give you a lot of the news. We don't give you all the news. I'm here to give you the news that we failed to mention. Now here's Jeff Oske with what you failed to mention news. Pew, 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 pew. Uh, last week, a truck containing Vicks VapoRub overturned on the highway, spilling its contents across all lanes during rush hour. Uh, what you failed to mention, it did relieve all the traffic congestion. <laughs> it relieved the traffic congestion. Fix vapor rub. Oh, the crowd likes it. Oh. Uh, a man was arrested after authorities discovered hundreds of rare, exotic, illegal snails in a family's home last week. Oh. What you failed to mention, sorry, kids, your daddy has to escargo to jail. Mm. Escargo um, to cute. jail. Very cute. Did you cute. Say cute? It was labeled <laughs> cute by Josh Arnold. Oh, I will. Uh, shoot myself uh, we learned that scientists say that moths actually are not attracted to light. Hmm. Yes, uh, what you failed to mention, I've done my own research, and according to the dozens of dead moths in my porch lamp, I've made a new hypothesis. <laughs> uh, I, thought they, I thought they weren't attracted to light, but they just wanted to be friends with the light. Oh, is that? Uh, Maybe, no. Cute. Uh, there's nothing there. Cute. They're cute. I got the cute that time. A uh, New England hiker killed a rabid coyote that attacked him with his bare hands. Ooh. What you failed to mention, the man says, beside the rabies, he's never felt more alive. <laughs> <laughs> a coastal bluff landslide in Southern California has left a multi-million dollar mansion teetering on the edge of a cliff. Uh, what you failed to mention, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, for some reason when I read this, I thought of Mitch Hedberg. I don't know why, but <laughs> all I could hear him saying was, uh, this house is about to go from ocean front to ocean in. <laughs> <laughs> ocean in. <laughs> Uh, we learned a shy donkey was trying to make new friends after his other donkey friend passed away. What you failed to mention, I have good news to report. The shy, lonely donkey has made three new friends, a goofy goat, a lustful llama, and a really, really mad cow. <laughs> mad cow. <Cute. laughs> mad cow. A human leg was found on the subway tracks in New York City. What you failed to mention, police are on the lookout for a person with a very severe limp. <laughs> oh, that is severe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Severe. yeah. Oh, oh. Trouble, oh. trouble getting Ooh. upstairs. Uh, you mentioned this last break. We d we didn't do the story, but I'm going to do it anyway. Okay. Uh, prosecutors in the Eagles Hotel California Lyric case have dropped all charges against the three men accused of stealing the lyric sheet. Right. Well, you failed to mention, I haven't seen this much hubbub around a case since the 2004 State of California versus the Baja men as to who actually truly let the dogs out. <laughs> <laughs> An influencer is eating raw chicken every single day until he gets a tummy ache. Oh. <laughs> what you failed to mention, the, the influencer is not worried about see, being sick uh, since he identifies as a raccoon. <laughs> identifies <laughs> as a... That's nope. silly. That yeah. <laughs> oh, there we go. That made it all better. Oh, he's That's... a raccoon. Oh, oh hey. Wow. I don't know where the... I don't know where... Take that, it easy, fella. I don't know oh. where that came from. Oh, now they're immediately indifferent. <laughs> <laughs> the band Rage Against the Machine has broken up. 
Uh, what you failed to mention, they're reforming under their new name, somewhat frustrated with my HOA. <laughs> All grown up. And finally, as you saw, Caitlin Clark, the college basketball standout, has declared that she will be adding herself to the WNBA draft list for next year. Well, you failed to mention she's apparently tired of playing before packed arenas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jeff Oskay, and this is in the news that we <laughs> failed to mention. <laughs> yeah! Jeff Oskay. Man. It's, it's not Jeff's fault. Though. Jeff angers America. <laughs> He's taking over your title. Jeff angers America. <laughs> well, maybe she'll help pack those she arenas. She will pack. Oh, yeah. I'd imagine so she will. Yeah. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dolly Parton and her sister Rachel Parton George have collaborated Everybody on a cookbook. Everybody, shut up! I want to hear about them. Good looking cooking will include recipes. <laughs> Good looking cooking. I think Good it's, looking cooking. It includes eighty dishes, including country ham and biscuits, barbecue spare ribs, and <laughs> slaw of many colors. Pat, tell me uh, a slaw of many colors. Uh huh. <laughs> oh my God. Slaw of That's many pretty, colors. That's yes. Funny. Yeah, good looking cooking. I will, will be always out. love stew. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be out this fall, September 17th, just in time for the Christmas buy. Oh, season, good looking cooking, a year good, of meals. It good says looking here. cooking. It, Jolene cuisine, I think is one of those. Very nice. <laughs> really good. You would think she would have a name for all of her recipes like that. I would hope so. Yeah. Oh, you can pre order it. It won't be here till September. I know. What the hell is that all about? Boy, oh hmm. boy. Helen Mirren, who was the narrator for the Barbie movie, is now a Barbie doll. Mattel has recreated her look on the red carpet at the Cannes Film Festival last year with a cornflower blue gown, blue fan, blue hair, all that matched. Mirren says that the um, the part that is absolutely perfect is that the doll also carries an Oscar, which I bring this up because the Oscars are Sunday night. Oh, they are? Live on ABC. Already? And they are going to start an hour earlier this year. <laughs> and the producers are promising... Some cameos and surprises that have not been announced. Yeah, well. In other words, please watch. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Helen Mirren Barbie doll also has very breakable hips. <laughs> so very likely. Oh, they boy. should do a throwback She's Helen Mirren from uh, The yeah. Cook, The Thief, The Wife. Oh, oh boy. Oh, love her. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. a scene in National Treasure 2 where Helen Mirren has to jump and her cleavage, when I was 14, <laughs> she's one of just my go-tos now. Really? She helped develop my sexual identity. Mm. Oh, yeah, Helen Mirren. I really, I love Helen Mirren. Thank you so much for your work, Miss Mirren. Uh, Whew. Yeah, Big she's fan. beauty. Big fan. All right, coming up, we have more news, and we have our special guest. Yes, Kevin Nealon will yes. be along here in a, a couple of minutes. All right. We'll right. talk to him about what's what. We'll be right back. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Reach us toll-free at 1-888-BOB-TOM-1. Kids are, what, 11 is your son, right? Yes, correct. How old your daughter? Six. Six. Okay, mm -hmm. great, great. Yeah, she, and, uh, she I, still gets away with stuff, probably. Six years she's old. So she's so funny that cute. I just refuse to punish her for anything. <laughs> right. She came up from kindergarten one day, and she goes, Dad, Stacy and I were playing catch, and she hit me right in the balls. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> she only has an older brother. She's only heard that area right. referred sure. to right. as that. As, right. uh -huh. uh, a good dad would tell her that she's wrong. Uh -huh. I am not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I have chosen to use that to my advantage. Uh -huh. She'll be on her first date and making out with some dude, and she'll be like, <gasps> Touch my ball. <laughs> <laughs> Guess who's done making out? <laughs> Until at least college, because now everyone in high school thinks she has ball. <laughs> Thanks, Facebook. Best daddy. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Hey, hi, I'm Tom, this is Chick, that's Josh, and this is Christy Lee. Christy, what's happening? Hey, Charleston, the Bob and Tom Show here and our friends at Rock 105 WKLC are bringing us to town for a live show with special guest. Duke Tomato and the Bob and Tom Brass to Mouth Horns Plus. Do not miss an amazing comedy show that night. That's right, it all happens Friday, April 5th at the Charleston Coliseum and Convention Center. If you're listening anywhere within 100 miles of Charleston or Deacon, 
come out and see us live on the morning of April 5th. That's a free show. And then get tickets for that night's Bob and Tom Show comedy tour event with who, Christy? Pat Godwin, Josh Arnold, Jeff Oske, Willie Griswold. All hosted by Tom and Christy. Aww. Tickets on sale now, and they're going fast. Get your tickets at Ticketmaster.com or the Charleston Coliseum box office. See you there! <laughs> At the end of my show, sometimes people will, you know, shout out a request or something like that, which is very flattering. And, uh, you know, you get to do some bit that you haven't done in a long time. And it's mm -hmm. kind of fun sometimes to knock the dust off something that you haven't done and do it again, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's, I, uh, it's, it's really cool. I, I recently had somebody yell, uh, hooked on phonics, which I hadn't <laughs> done in a long time. Uh -huh. And uh, it's fun to go, oh, man, I haven't done this bit like in, you know, years. And, uh... That, that was the bit from the, the commercial. Do you remember the Hooked on Phonics sure. girl? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the little girl with the braces. Hooked on Phonics, work for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, I, and I always wondered, what if she applied what she learned and she couldn't get the commercial right, you know? Hook it on Phonics, <laughs> work it for me. Hook it on Phonics, work it. <laughs> okay, cut. <laughs> we're not going to move a lot of tapes like this. <laughs> no, we're not. No. I'm telling you. <laughs> Brian Regan. Hey, did you enjoy those videos played in that break? Check out the Bob and Tom YouTube playlist for more great stuff. Joe DeRosa is sitting in with us right now, Joe. Uh, what else What else is going on in your life? Uh, what, what about your personal background? Big family, small background, a, a small family? What? Uh... Uh, I'm in a relatively small family that I was adopted mm -hmm. ah. into. Uh -huh. Yes. Interesting. And I know what... You were adopted into the DeRosa family? Yes, I was. Uh -huh. And I know what everybody is wondering, because mm. I always, you know... Did you ever look for your... Did you ever look for your real parents? Yeah. That's what everybody wants to know. Did you ever... I saw that on Maury. Did you ever try to find your real parents? Uh, no. I pretty much took the hint, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, they right. abandoned me. Uh, I was like, yeah. that's, that's probably, that's the end of that. Probably no. No yeah. sense in looking for him. Really. <laughs> yeah. I got you. Uh, okay. Uh -huh. really. uh -huh. I'm sure there's a lot Dropping of gold. Dropping a dime on a mom of, and dad. A lot of gold comedy down this yeah. road. <laughs> yeah. And now I have a very, like... My mother was very overprotective through my whole life, and mm -hmm. but uh, she's uh, she's very involved in my life, and she uh, she calls me almost uh, every day, every day, and holds me hostage on the phone for hours on end. <laughs> while she she just she's at this age where she just holds me on the phone and just asks me all these really annoying questions, and she won't let me hang up, and mm -hmm. it it just sounds like I'm having really bad phone sex for like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> just like uh, yes. <laughs> you're looking for a romantic gift this Valentine's Day, then Frigamall Flores has the gift for you. It's our I know I'm not going to get any for a month unless I send you some flowers bouquet. <laughs> yes, for just $59.95, you can send her the I know I'm not going to get any for a month unless I send you some flowers bouquet. The I know I'm not going to get any for a month unless I send you some flowers bouquet proclaims your lust for her in the most romantic way possible. The bouquet of lovely fresh flowers says, let's do it and my loins ache. Your wedding vows didn't include a vow of chastity, but you're not going to see any action unless you act now. So pick up the phone and order the I know I'm not going to get any for a month unless I send you some flowers bouquet. Right now. That's the I know I'm not going to get any for a month unless I order you some flowers bouquet. With one phone call, you can cover your ass and get some ass. It's a win-win. <laughs> Call now. Because when Cupid shoots his arrow on February 14th, you won't be shooting anything unless you get her some flowers. <laughs> they don't say we didn't warn you. Oh, my God! There's laughter ahead. This is Bob and Tom Radio. We don't know anything about you, Christian. Are you a married guy, single guy? I am married. I got married uh, this past August. I am one of those lucky men. Uh, I'm one of those at-first-sight situations. I met my wife. I looked at her, and I said, oh, my God, 
this is the woman I want to spend the next four to seven years with. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's huge. That, that is an huge. That is, uh, <laughs> that is an time. exciting time, <laughs> isn't it, Chris? Isn't it sweet? Yes, isn't it, it sweet? is lovely. How's it going? You know, it's not bad. Uh -huh. She travels with me a lot, you know, not as often as I like. I love traveling with my wife because every time we go away together, we play this really fun game. It's called, uh, How Is This My Fault? <laughs> Bob and Tom. Oh. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Chick. There's Josh Arnold. Hey. Ace Cosby's here. Hey. That Ace Cosby joke of the day is could happen at any minute. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Willie Griswold. Hey, man. What's hey. going on? What's going on? Joke of the day. Oh, all we're right. done already? Yeah. <laughs> that is one of the, <laughs> one of the best ones I've ever heard. Here he is oh. with his joke of the day. I told my wife the uh, neighbor just died. Oh, yeah. No. She Man. said, who, Ray? I said, too early to celebrate. That was Ace Cosby's joke of the day. Hooray. 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 Oh. Hooray. Yeah. And I don't yeah. think you're married, are you? Yeah, you're not married. Well, I'm glad you don't know about me. <laughs> there sure is. The man's a, you know what? a mystery. He could be, and we wouldn't know. It would not surprise me. Not you. surprise me either. Uh, not, and no, no, probably no. one we, of his closest friends. We would know if he was married. That His wife would have <laughs> told, forced him to get that window fixed. <laughs> True enough. One thing. Yeah. Come Sunday, my clock in my car is right. Well, that, is that right? Because it's, it's automatic? <laughs> no, no I, I didn't change it. Oh, you ball. didn't change it. Look at you. <laughs> Boy, you really get around to stuff, don't you? My goodness. <laughs> you were so lazy, you kind of did something nice. What is it? Even a broken clock's right once, twice, twice a day? day. Twice Nailed a day. It. Yeah, there you go. Oh, we have a guest. <laughs> yes, we do. Kevin Nealon had just come in and sit down. Here he is. Wow, usually when I walk in, people go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you guys will just continue your conversation. Yeah, we were, oh, and, yeah. Like I was a uh, fly on the wall. <laughs> we, were trying to, we were trying to keep our cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man, I'm telling you what. <laughs> Jeez, I thought maybe I'm in the wrong room. No. <laughs> Great to see you. I, yeah, you too, man. It's good to be back. Yes. Uh, I, sometimes I'll, I'll come to the radio station. I can't remember if I've been here before or yeah. not, but um, I don't think I've been to this one. But you guys are all over the country. I don't think you've been in this studio. You've but been I, here. Not, yes, yeah, I have you've been, been here. here. Yeah. yeah. Someone gave the thumbs up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's okay. I forget every day too, so it's all right. Yeah. I That's all right. Come How back. How's the traffic today? How's the drive? I don't do Does traffic. Anybody? No, I know, but you drove in, right? Oh, well, I drove in at 4.30, so it wasn't bad. Did you see the way I covered myself yeah. right there? <laughs> <laughs> That's a professional, ladies and gentlemen. One time, Gary Shanling was on stage. I love Gary, a good friend of mine, and um, he said to the woman in the front row, he said, when are you having your baby? She goes, I'm not pregnant. He said, oh, I'm sorry, because you had a glow about you. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. She forgot all about it. Uh, boy, right you're there. fat. He <laughs> just called me a fatty fat. I think so. Fatty yeah. fat, 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 fat. But anyway, fatty it's good fat. to be here, man. Like, this is, let's see, there's six of us now. Uh, yeah. Six, uh, five guys. Well, and one. Oh, there's one back oh, here. Oh, yeah. There's one guy behind you. Yeah. One guy over there, too. No, he yeah. doesn't oh, yeah. have headphones yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Pat oh, Godwin, who you see on the TV screen, we have to keep him sequestered over there. Oh, really? Yeah. He could still have COVID. He could still have COVID. That's what we tell him. Yeah, that's what we tell him. You should put a big mask over the whole window. Oh, yes. Up. That would be good. <laughs> <laughs> I have bad hair days. Oh, yeah. Well, not anymore. I've never anymore. seen a table in the round like this. Y you could put a fountain in the middle. That yeah, we, we should. Perfect. We've always well, talked about why is there dead space in the middle. But then... And there's no way to get in there unless you climb over the desk. <laughs> which right. is really See, I think practical. we should have our guests stand there and just sort of <laughs> perform in the round. <laughs> With their microphone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That would be a great idea. <laughs> Kevin, get in. <laughs> you hike, jump in there. This would be a good bar, actually. Put a bartender in the middle. Yeah. Oh, you could be cleaning oh, the yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wiping up the bar. Yeah. Right. yeah. They should have mics at every bar, actually. And, and they, you know, you go to. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me, I ordered a 7 to 7. <laughs> Where is it? Hello? <laughs> no check, please. Did you uh, just come from doing your uh, incredibly successful podcast? Uh, what is it? Hiking with Kevin? Or? Hiking with Kevin. It's a yeah. web series. Oh. I take pride in saying I don't do a podcast. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Because it's outside. I have a selfie stick. And no, I did not just come from there. But I did just finish my fourth season, about 116 hikes total. Oh, my wow. gosh. And uh, I am exhausted. Oh, I oh, bet. Yeah, that is. Yeah. Is, it, I mean, is it always the same trail? No. 
No, it's a lot of different trails. Mostly in Los Angeles, although I have done, uh, I did one in Utah with Donnie Osmond. Oh. And I did one in Germany with Chelsea Handler. And I did one in uh, a couple in the Smoky Mountains with Nate Bargatze and Cheryl Crow. Huh. And uh, Susan Yeagley from uh, Parks and Rec. Now, did you have to do it in Utah with Donny Osmond because he can't leave the state because he has an ankle monitor or something? Oh, you know he's up to something, Willie. No. You know, actually, um, he, it was his suggestion we do it in Sundance. And oh. It was, when it, there was, it was snow on the ground, so we used snowshoes. And it's probably one of my favorite hikes because we must have fallen about half a dozen times oh, you know, with the camera and stuff. Oh. <laughs> Neither one of us were, were adept really at snowshoeing. And then we pretended we walked to Vegas. So I edited it so it looked like we were walking over the mountains because he does a show in Vegas. And, uh, yeah, you can look at it look at it on YouTube. That's funny. Kevin Neal and, yeah. and Donnie. How Oscar. many miles do you usually go on your show? 30. 30 miles That's a hike. That's a long, that's a nice uh, hike, yeah. <laughs> I hike from city to city. Right. <laughs> city to city, yeah. I do, you know, I, I do, uh, I pick up a guest in, uh, you know, different states. One guest in different states as I'm walking to the East Coast. Mm -hmm. But, um, no, I do, like, it depends on the guest. <laughs> I, I tell them, really, I, I just need you for an hour. Okay. Because it won't take up a lot of their time. And where do you live? I'll find a trail close to you. And what do you drink? What's your coffee you drink? You know, oh, some okay. people, I know I'm not going to get a good hike if they show up with a cup of coffee because ah. uh, they take the coffee with them. But the hikes started off really steep. Mm -hmm. And as each year went by, I've been doing it for four years now, they get less and less <laughs> of an incline. <laughs> Next year, downhill with a car waiting at the bottom. Uh, you know? Do you think uh, mall walking's in your future for uh, <laughs> season five? Or? Maybe. Maybe. That's not yeah. a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to walk with uh, Steve Martin, and he says, you know, I just can't. I mean, can, can we do Beverly Hills and just hold some bushes behind us? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. Have a bear come out. <laughs> Have you seen any wild animals on your hikes? Good question. <laughs> I was on a hike with somebody once, and he did say that, like every other question. That's a good question. That's a good question. Uh, but I was hiking in one canyon once when I was doing the show Weeds, and I was about halfway, about halfway up, and I was studying my lines. Um, and it's early in the morning because that's when I could retain things. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, and then I heard a deep growl off to my left. I could feel it in my chest. You know, it wasn't oh. a dog or, and I just knew it was a mountain lion. <gasps> and I scurried up to the top and I waited for like an hour or so and the sun was coming up now and <laughs> uh, I knew there was other people on the trail. So I came down and, you know, nothing. But the next day, I swear to you, they caught a 200 pound mountain lion right down on the, on the sunset boulevard at the bottom of the trail. Wow. I know that had to be the one. It had to be. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Yeah, so that I didn't see one, but I do see a lot of uh, coyotes and bobcats. And I saw, I actually saw a squirrel. No. Yeah, I almost stepped on it. <laughs> <laughs> rattlesnakes, a lot of rattlesnakes in the summer, especially. Oh and here's a little tip for rattlesnakes. Oh, okay. Because I've, I've run into, and then I'll let you talk a little bit. All right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, no, go ahead. You're Please. fine. You're doing fine. We've been doing I, it I ran into a snake wrangler on one of my hikes. They were shooting some show uh, in Malibu. And, um, he said, the, you got to watch out for the baby rattlesnakes because they have a lot of venom and they don't know how to control it. And they're just crazy, you know. And, uh, <laughs> and also, if you, uh, you want to move the rattlesnake, uh, I thought you'd throw like a rock at them, you know, to get them to move right, off the trail. Right. But they feel the vibrations on the ground. So if you stomp really hard... They'll slither away, but don't get too close and stop, you know. <laughs> See, that's that's the tricky part. <laughs> Where's that line? Don't yeah. get yeah. too close. It's got to be weird, all the animals, because you have to assume, too, they they want an autograph, you know. Uh, they they want a selfie. Yeah, 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 yeah you're so right. They want yeah. a selfie, yeah. and, uh, and I will usually sign, you know, if there's a, a, a bear, I will sign the boobs. <laughs> well, that's nice. <laughs> Did you sign my wife's boo? <laughs> that's, the, that's the husband bear. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that has happened to me, by the right. way. Right. It's uh, happened to you, too? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. If they come up and they go, what What the hell's the meaning of this? They yank her shirt down. And I go, I, I think we're in love. It's always refreshing when they say boobs, yeah. by the way. That's a, <laughs> you don't get that often. I had a guy come up to me and say that once. Hey, would you sign my boobs? <laughs> But I did have a, a, several times a, a woman came up and, and I learned not to sign boobs. Yes. Because I don't think she had permission from her boyfriend. Yeah. Oh. And I could see them later. I, at first I thought she was maybe a dancer at a club or something, you know, and this is fine, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. <laughs> and, uh, but I'll sign other people's names now. I won't oh, yeah. <laughs> Dana Carvey signed my wife's boobs. <laughs> 
You tell Carvey I'm looking for him. All right? I sure will, buddy. You're darn right. Oh, man. Yeah, it's crazy. <sighs> I used to do a thing at the end of my act where I would sketch somebody from the audience. I was just going to ask you, you about were? this because I had seen you do that, and it's I don't want to give too much of it away. I don't do it anymore. Oh, so. God, it's so Very wonderful. Funny, yeah. Thank you. So funny. Well, what I do is I, I, I bring an easel on stage with a big you know, pad of uh, paper, yeah. and I'll ask uh, someone to come up from the audience because I'm learning how to sketch like the people down on the boardwalk yeah and she'll come up and she'll be facing the audience my back will be to the audience they could see the, the painting of charcoal <laughs> and i'll ask her a lot of silly questions like they do on the boardwalk <laughs> so you go to school oh yeah okay cool All right, and we're yeah you're here on vacation okay no matter what she says okay I'm sketching her picture yeah. and as i'm sketching it, i'm moving her face around a little bit and i have charcoal all over my fingers <laughs> and i kind of and by the end of the sketch she's got almost a black face <laughs> and then i show her at the so end of the and the audience is dying and i show her in the mirror and she you know of course she flips out <laughs> but you know getting back to signing the boobs i i did that once in um in Lake Tahoe, one of those casinos, and great show. And then this couple came up to me two different times. This happened. One couple came up. They said, "You know, we really enjoyed your show up until you, you know, you did that thing with my wife, the charcoal all over her face." <laughs> no. really, um, you know, and oh, I said, "I'm sorry. Where where is she right now?" I said, "She's in the bathroom. She's she's it's her birthday and she's upset. Oh. She's crying." Oh. <laughs> so I talked to the guy for a while until she came out. And uh, you know how charming I am? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, God, yeah. I loosened them up a little bit. And then yeah. she came out. And uh, by the time they left, um, they asked me to sign it. And they said, thank you. We really had a good time, you know? Oh. Good time. Oh. And by the way, would you sign my wife's boob? <laughs> <laughs> that was a happy ending. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll have a happy ending when you uh, call the folks at Simply Safe. Experts and customers both uh, love Simply Safe for comprehensive protection. You know, Simply Safe just named Best Home Security System of 2024 by U.S. News and World Report and recognized Best Customer Service in Home Security by Newsweek. Advanced technology at Simply Safe protects every room, window, and door of your home. Cameras keep watch, high definition cameras for suspicious activity 24 7. And uh, Simply Safe backed by 24 7 professional monitoring for around less than a dollar a day. And it's easy to install the system yourself, or you can have the professionals at Simply Safe take care of it. Simply Safe has a 60-day risk-free trial. If you don't love your system, return it for a full refund. And we have a deal for you. Protect your home today, and Bob and Tom's show listeners get a special 20% off any new Simply Safe system when you sign up for Fast Protect Monitoring. Just visit simplysafetom.com. That's simplysafetom.com. There's no safe like Simply Safe. We'll be back with some news and more from uh, I have no news. We have a guest. Kevin Neal. Have you got any traffic? What? No traffic. <laughs> I do do weather though. <laughs> oh, we're going to have weather. Oh, we'll be yeah. right back with that. Gosh, this is the Bob time. and Tom show. Hi, this is comedian Rob Haney, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. I think we're going to take it down a notch and play something romantic. Oh, all right. All right. Secrets, you're not saying a word. Do, do, do. I can't describe just how much that hurts. Do, do, do. I thought our love was honest and true. Mm. Do, do, do. You're guilty, baby, and your silence is proof. It's not up to me this time. I'm leaving it up to you, baby. I'm leaving it up to you, girl. I'm leaving it up to you, baby. Don't you tear apart my world. I'm leaving it up to you, baby. I'm leaving it up to you, girl. Well, I just can't believe that you're deceiving me. 
<laughs> it's a slow dance for Java and Christy Lee, ladies and gentlemen. Lady's choice, obviously. <laughs> 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 you come home looking like you've been caught in the rain, <laughs> smelling like the lawn, and it ain't rain for days. Hi, karate. Time after time, <laughs> I say this can't get much worse. No, no, no. You've got cheating in your eyes, girl. <laughs> And your drawers in your purse. <laughs> oh. I, I, I can't read your mind. Hey, we've been living a lie. It's not up to me this time. I'm leaving it up to you, baby. I'm leaving it up to you, girl. Javis coming to see Well, I just can't believe <laughs> you're deceiving me. <laughs> oh, no. It smells like high karate. <laughs> <laughs> Been flash traffic with Carl Lewis. <laughs> Bob and Tom, well meaning, but yeah, they're they're all messed up. More than slightly confused. Comedian <laughs> Bruce Clark is our guest. <laughs> Come on, that Pictionary, you ever play that game? Pictionary? Sure. Yeah. That's we almost got in a fist fight over that, oh, didn't yeah. we, Chick? Yeah, we hey, sure did. Uh, you play with your friends, are always drunk too. You know, all your buddies are always. <laughs> <little bit drunk. laughs> Playing there. I get this uh, phrase, I draw it, you know, they're like, hey, how about a guy frying his own penis? How about that? That's in Pictionary. Idiot. Huh? <laughs> it's Peter Pan, you idiot. Get <laughs> <laughs> in front of you here, you moron. <laughs> you know you're too high when you're eating cereal naked and your girlfriend tells you to put some clothes on, you realize it's not your girlfriend, it's just a woman on a bus. So <laughs> that's how you know you're too high. <laughs> Sunshine. Bob and Tom Radio. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. We're all here with our special guest, Kevin Nealon. The Kevin Nealon. Wow, listen the to that crowd react. Kevin Nealon. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Tom, what was the first concert you ever went to? Me? Um... I like to ask people that question. Black Oak, Arkansas, JoJo Gun, and Bad Company. Ooh. And, ah. and Bad Company opened, so it was wow. 72, oh. 72, 73, something like that. How about you guys? I saw Elton John in 75. Oh, no way. 
75, 76. Wow. Yeah. That's it's awesome. Yeah. The Steve Miller Band, it was the Wide River Tour. Remember, the, it, like 92 <laughs> or something. That wasn't Josh the, is young. It was yeah. awesome. Abracadabra Day, it was it? No, he, he didn't even play that. Oh, no. Thank God. Okay. Will Check. he? Oh, well, sorry. if you think Josh's answer is young, the first concert I ever got a pick to go to was the, the Strokes. Awesome uh -huh. concert. Great. The first concert I ever went to was with my older sister. We saw the Spice Girls. All right. Oh, Didn't nice. love as much at the time. Tell me what you want. What you want. <laughs> Jackson 5 and Harold Melvin Harold in the Blue Notes. Yeah. Wow. Nice one. Nice one. Mine was a trifecta. Uh, like Tom. Mine was, um, and you probably never heard of some of these people. <clears throat> um. Edgar Winter. Sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. He had that show called, yeah. called that, that hit called Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Mm -hmm. And uh, the band Yes. Mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> and I don't know if you heard of these guys, the Eagles. Oh. <laughs> they were all in one show? They are all in one show. That's amazing. I, <laughs> in San Diego, I saw General Giant, Yes, and Peter Frampton Ooh. in the summer of 77. And I was like, whoa, what is... And Peter Frampton opened for Yes. Wow. How yeah. about you, Pat? A Starland Vocal Band, 77. Oh, gosh. Oh, no. Stop. Uh, Billy, yeah. Billy, Billy Joel, Paramount Theater, Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, 79. Oh, wow. Oh, that's wow. cool. That is crazy. Yeah. That's, uh, How many fights you get in? Uh, three. Three? <laughs> Wilkes-Barre? Yeah. That's, that's a tough town. I don't know if you've been there. Can Billy throw a punch? Yes, he can, actually. <laughs> he, he was a former boxer. Oh, is that that's right? right. Yeah. He won. Yeah. What was album really? is that where he has boxing gloves on the back of uh, it? Glass Houses? Is it? Maybe? Hmm. I don't know. Josh, you're the Billy Joel expert. What what album is that? I uh, I believe it's uh, Joel Joel the Musical Man. There's a second. Can't Some say a sophomore slump. I don't agree. No, can't no, keep Joel thing. down. <laughs> when did you start drawing characters? Well, I started drawing <clears throat> characters when I was a kid, um, but it was very. Um, you know, primitive way of drawing it. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even finish them, and they were quick. And and I I would draw um, you know a lot of different things too, like landscapes and uh, and on an SNL I would draw like on the margin of the script when we were doing the table read. Um, if I wasn't in a sketch, I would just kind of draw whoever's across from me, whether it's Farley or uh, you know whoever. And um, but then as I uh, I kind of got older, I used to also here's where I got my real education for drawing caricatures. My mother and father were each, uh, I had a framed um, painting of them in my bedroom from a Parisian artist who was a really good caricature artist, and it was pastels. And every night, I realized subconsciously I would be looking at those and just studying how they exaggerated the different, uh, you know, uh, traits of them. And so that was really my big education. And then when uh, the pandemic came along, I, um, did you guys go through the pandemic? Uh, yeah, no, we, we, right yeah, yeah. Did, did. we did have that here, yeah. 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 It got to us. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they test marketed it somewhere else. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, Columbus, Columbus, Ohio, they yeah. test marketed it. I left town until it blew over, then I came back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're but, lucky. Yes. We had to sit right here. <laughs> so then also I went on Instagram, and I saw a lot of different characters at work, and I was just blown away. I thought, wow, there's other people that are doing this, and they're really good. So like stand-up comedy, I was influenced by some of them. And, you know, when you first start out, you don't really have your own style, like with stand-up. Mm -hmm. When I was starting stand-up, everybody in the clubs, they were doing, uh, this is back in the 1900s, of course. Oh, sure. <laughs> this is, uh, they were doing uh, Woody Allen and Richard Pryor and Steve Martin. And, uh, and there weren't that many comics either. There was like a handful. It was such a novelty thing back then. And now, of course, everybody does stand-up comedy. Right, and there's so many comedy clubs, and it, it's not such a novelty thing anymore. I think the audience kind of knows; they know stand-up comedy, and they um, everybody has their own favorite comedian. And some of them you never heard of before, mm -hmm. and and I think everybody probably well, I don't want to generalize, but a lot of people have been to comedy clubs now, and they know the whole brick wall. And it's, it's not that scary for them. People are sitting in the front row now. That's how... Yes, they used to be... Don't yeah. sit in the front. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. Now they want to sit on stage. I said, no, no, that's too close. <laughs> that is very close. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Willie knows what I'm talking about. Right yeah. there in the splash zone. They want to be close. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And you and Kevin did the shows together? When was that? Yeah, I hosted for Kevin at Helium in downtown Indy about two years ago. It was a no great kidding. show. A lot yeah. of fun. I thought I'd see you there this weekend. I'm in uh, Kokomo this Saturday. I might come hang out tonight. Oh. Catch the early show. All right. You're in Kokomo with Greg Hahn tomorrow night, is yes, that Yes, right? sir. You yeah. see how I did that? Mm -hmm. Way to go there, Chad. Yeah. And okay. that's Kokomo, Indiana, not yeah, way down in not Kokomo. Way down yeah. 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 Not way down. Not the Beach Boys. I was going to say, Kokomo. why would the Beach Boys be here in Kokomo? <laughs> Kokomo. <laughs> they love the Midwest. <laughs> what do you got over there on the news uh, desk, Christy? Oh, boy. Maybe Kevin can weigh in on one of these stories. He used to do this. I, I know. I'm embarrassed. I, 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 no, no, 
no, believe me, there were there was a lot of bad news where I came from. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm going to go on record to say I don't write this, okay? Just oh, okay. so you know. All they right. took that away from me years ago. I'm oh, sorry. Boy. Liam Neeson set to star in a Naked Gun reboot. Oh. He'll play the bumbling police detective Drebin in the role made famous by Leslie uh, Nielsen. Frank Drebin. It just says Drebin here. I told <laughs> I you I wonder if he'll this. play Frank Drebin or if it'll be like a son or a... Uh, oh, oh, maybe a, a, bro a brother we never heard of. Right. Or, uh, it's coming out in July of 2025. That's good... plenty of time to spend. Because he's yeah. always in those movies like Taken, where he's got to get his daughter back. Yeah, right. sure. yeah. And yeah. this is uh, the, this is the spoof on what? Or the sequel? Uh, naked, naked Gun. Naked, naked Gun. gun. Yeah. So he's got to get his gun back or something. Yeah. You know? no. <laughs> Put some clothes on it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, what's it doing out there naked? It's sexy, though. <laughs> it's a sexy gun. People, uh, you know, there are people who find guns sexy, right? Of course they do. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. I knew a girl who uh -oh. thought the most sexy thing was being with a guy in bed with a gun hanging over the headboard. <laughs> oh, wow. Jeez. She's Man. no longer with us. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. You hit that headboard too hard. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's, that is rough. Remember in The Sopranos, Man. Richie and, uh, Richie Richie and Jan Janice? And she, and she, oh, that's really dark, yeah. She said, uh, Richie holds a gun to my head. And she goes, I make him take the clip out. <laughs> that's really, okay. really. All right, Janice. Isn't it romantic? Yeah. <laughs> well, Richie got his. So, okay. On a much lighter note, candy companies are trying to find new ways to get you to chew gum again. Hmm. I guess there's a problem. Are, are gum chewers down? Gum sales dropped chick by nearly a third in 2020 oh thanks my. to the pandemic. Wow. Yeah. What? Do you know in Singapore, I think it is, they don't allow gum chewing? Yeah, you it's illegal. Find, yo, you won't find one piece of gum on the sidewalk. Well, good for really? them. Really? Yeah. Also, they cane people, though, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that was a big... Yeah. Get the, the cane center, not the Singapore. And not with Should, sugar cane. <laughs> no. Should we introduce caning here? <laughs> Yes. Some things. Yeah. What, what would you cane somebody for? Um, breaking into a car. Oh, okay. So oh, actual light offenses like yeah. uh, not putting the shopping cart back in the corral. Well, wait a minute. That's yeah, really that's serious. Man, that yeah. might be worth one swipe in the. Yeah, that's a. Game. But do you put them back? <laughs> I do. Yes. I do. Yeah, I am very good. About I do too. Yes, I Don't do. look at me. All, All right. right. I, I take want them my home. quarterback. <laughs> How many do you have in your collection? Now? Oh my God, I got I got one from uh, every different grocery store in my town. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know who's got the best uh, um, carts? Publix, Publix. Oh, from yeah. Florida. Publix Florida has great ones. Yeah. So does Target. I think Target. Target's Target. Target. Yeah. They got the big plastic yeah. ones. I like the ones at Aldi. They're great. They only cost a quarter. That's too. right. Yeah, that's a good deal. Right Some that's stores right. have the, yeah. uh, the high tech ones that have brakes on it. You can't. Uh, that that nailed me at a Kroger. It went to a. It came to a certain reaching halt. Yeah. What? I went. What the yeah. hell is this? The oh, guy they, goes, they have like a low jack. You never seen that? No, I've never seen that. And the guy goes, "Oh, we forgot to disengage that or whatever. It's an anti theft thing where the wheels just stop working. That's right. Outside of a certain area." I don't like this at the airports is they charge you like six dollars for those carts for your luggage mm. and if you don't do that then you got to get a porter and that's why i go carry on now yeah that's smart <laughs> yeah. it's yeah. very smart Chrissy, i like the way you did the liam neeson uh thing yeah. and then the next one was and on a lighter note <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from the naked gun. yeah well you guys were talking about guns on people's uh, heads having sex well, that's oh, they, uh, yeah. no. we did, no. kevin you did mention a woman being killed yeah. <laughs> Okay, okay. Right, you got me there. You yeah, got me that there. was you. Yeah. Yeah. We got a little hot. We got a little hot. Yeah, yeah anyway, apparently uh, anyway. gun sales is yeah. they're down. Sales in dollars are back to pre-pandemic levels, but that's due to inflation. Mars, which owns the 133-year-old Wrigley brand, is repositioning gum Some... as a stress reliever. Isn't that uh, Rather than a breath freshener. I'm the only... Mars owns Wrigley. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that wild? Think about that. There's got to be some antitrust uh, issues. Yeah, they right. got to take a look. What, what is your favorite candy bar? Uh, I gotta go. Uh, I gotta go. Snickers. I, Snickers yeah, is hard I agree. to beat. Um, yeah. Uh, I like a, a Reese's peanut butter cup, oh, or as I yeah, say, yeah. Reese's peanut butter yeah. cup. Well, that's how the uneducated would Stop say. Stop it. Yes, <laughs> Reese's. Tell us Midwesterners say But it. I like the ones that are, I don't like the cups. I like the Reese's in uh, different shapes, like uh, like a Christmas tree. Or, or the pumpkins. A pumpkin. Bats, yeah. or a don't you love it when you bite into something, you don't know there's peanut butter in there? No. Oh, and then you hit it, and oh, you go, yeah. oh. This Have is you had the uh, Reese's <laughs> peanut butter and uh, caramel? No. No, it's very good. Oh, I know what your third choice is, uh -huh. besides Snickers yeah. and... Um, Reese. Reese is Kit Kat. 
Oh. I like really? Kit Kat. I like okay. Kit Kat. I'll, uh, I'll eat a Kit Kat. I thought maybe I don't know you as well. As I, <laughs> I, know. I like a Kit Kat. Kit Kats are great because you could just, you don't have to eat the whole thing. You can break off little oh. columns. Come on. He and I are here. kindred spirits. I <laughs> yeah. eat one. One section, one section a day. One section a day and they make fun of me. A Kit Kat lasts for a whole week. <laughs> Kevin, you can't abide this. Tom, here's my problem. Uh-huh. I don't know if anybody's on board with this, but I am such a fan. I'm not sponsoring them or promoting them. It's the... Um, the double chocolate Milano cookies. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, we got, those are I insane. Think we have those I'll in get them. a bag of those, and oh. they'll be eaten by the time I get to the cash register. Oh, and if yeah. not, I'll put them home in the freezer, <laughs> and I'll dunk them in milk. And I love, I love that That's so much. That's a good much. choice. I don't think they're... Uh, I don't think they're... Did you that, eat all the Milano cookies? I don't think they're that shoplifting if you eat them before you get to the register. No, no. Oh. They're not. You know, once you go out the door, yeah. then that's a final Is that a Pepperidge load. Farm? Yes. Yeah. It is. Uh, sure Pepperidge is. Farms remembers. But oh, I do yeah, think you should remember. be cane for that if you take them outside. <laughs> yes, you can't get yeah. cane for that. Is there a Pepperidge Farms? Can we go see, <laughs> see the fields of Milano? What are we doing? <laughs> fields of Milano. Is there a hidden valley? Is that what we're doing? Great stings. Are there Pepperidge Farmers? They're growing the little chess pieces. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite Girl Scout cookie? Uh, I'm going to go, uh, you know what? I'm a very vanilla man. Uh, trefoils. The, uh, Samoas. The shortbreads. Interesting. I just like those shortbreads. And I, I, oh, yeah. This That's is very fat. Why do they go... To such trouble to make a cookie, and they arrive at a trefoil. Oh, they're good. <laughs> I, I, I stack them in a glass, and I just pour milk in the glass. Oh, oh, right. nice. coffee. Well, that it's is very a fat good idea. Yeah. Oh, and you <laughs> scoop them out. Well, now wait a minute. I call it an Orson Welles cereal. That's yeah. what I, that's what I call it. Josh, Tom, I mean, if I know you like I think I know you, you like the peanut butter ones. Thank you, Kevin, but I'm Chick. Yeah, you don't know him too well. His name's Chick. <laughs> Tom, where's Tom? Uh, I'm his kid. Tom's, Tom's gone. Yeah. He's gone. You look like a Tom. He does. A lot of people do. And you look like you're in control of the whole show. I'm trying to fill in. In, but, uh, Is my face red? No, 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 no don't worry. All you totally here. saved it, though. <laughs> yeah. Willie, what about you? <laughs> <laughs> I do like I like the tagalongs, and Josh, I'll get a uh, the peanut butter Girl Scout is the answer. Is that yeah. tagalong? I knew uh, it. Dosey do. Yeah, you do it. You know, you do know me. What but I, I do know something. I get Reese's Puffs, and then I break up the Tagalongs, and I put them in the Reese's Puffs. Oh it's just God. a big peanut butter chocolate cereal delight. But I was at the grocery store. There were the girls selling the Girl Scout cookies out front, and I go, hey, ladies, do you have any Tagalongs? And they go, oh, no, we just ran out. And I go, see ya. And I just didn't support the Girl Scouts. I'm still embarrassed about it. Hey, guys, do you have any Tagalongs? Oh. That would be me. Where's your car? <laughs> <laughs> Where are we going? <laughs> Where are we going? <laughs> the Nabisco Mansion is for sale. Did you hear about this? Nabisco you, Mansion? Do you know about it in St. Louis? Because it's in St. Louis, Missouri. What? I'm not aware what? of it. Know that. Yeah, according to Riverfront Times, the house was built in 1906 for Mr. Louis Dozier, president of what would become the Nabisco Company. His nickname was Bull. Yeah. Bull Dozer. 13,000 square foot property features 24 rooms, an in-ground swimming pool, and a medieval-style ballroom. Medieval? Medieval. medieval. <laughs> Torture Rex. Yeah. Mm. Medieval. The homes, you ought to see how he spelled that, by the way. The home's current owners purchased the mansion in 1996 and have since restored it. It's listed at just under $2 million. The Nabisco Mansion. And you're not familiar with it. Oh. It's not far from Pepper Farm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And the Keebler tree. <laughs> Tom, have you been say, there? Yeah, the Nabisco. <laughs> ah, bravo. Oh, yeah. Bravo. Uh, Nabisco has a house, but Keebler only has a dumb tree. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, oh, the elves don't need a whole mansion. Yeah, that's true. Oh, yes. my God. I, I forgot about Keebler. Yeah, that's Keebler good... elves. What yeah. are the ones with the stripes on them? They make that cookie with the... Fudge. Uh, fudge stripes. Fudge stripes. Yes. Yeah. That's not a bad thing. Do you like, like the fudge stripes? It? You ever yeah. put uh, nine or ten fudge stripe cookies in a glass of milk, Josh, and spoon them out? That is... So, no, I'm not that fat. I put them in <laughs> ice cream. <laughs> Josh, that's the best idea I've ever heard. I take a stack of those and pour some milk. Uh, yeah. You put them in a bowl or just... Glass. Uh, oh, glass. oh, that's yeah. a better idea. Yeah. Well, a very good. nice... Uh, and then when you get to the bottom, do you drink the rest of the milk of on the cookies? Yeah. Do you do that with Lorna Dunes, too? Lorna Ooh, Dunes? Lorna Dunes. I, did, I didn't know we had royalty. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Who the hell is Lorna Dunes? She makes a nice shortbread cookie. Who can she afford does. a Lorna Dunes? <laughs> got an extra job for a Lorna Dunes. Oh, boy. We got a Rockefeller over here. <laughs> that explains that That's car right. in the parking lot. Yeah. Uh, right. Nobody mentioned Oreos. 
I mean, yeah. that's, that's they nailed horrible. it, didn't oh, they? That's, uh, okay. Yeah. 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 And I'll yeah. do the same with Oreos. Yeah. Stack. Oh, you won't split them open and lick it out? <laughs> I don't. I don't split them. No, no. I think that they're perfect as the same. Yeah, I've never done that. Yeah, I see that. Do you like happens. a golden Oreo or do you stick with I just don't. Chocolate? I want the chocolate. Yes. Once again, like you, like Gordon, Oreo. you like golden Oreo because you think they cost more. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly yeah, right. My, you think you're better than us. You like the chocolate covered Oreos? I, I have had the white chocolate covered Oreos. Oh, oh, one of my, my an ex girlfriend of mine loved those. Those make your teeth hurt, don't they? Man, wow. they are very, very sweet. Now, Josh, where do you stand on the double stuff? Oh, I'm a, I'm a traditional stuff. stuffed That's man, but double, nothing wrong with double stuffed. Where do you stand on the deep fried? Uh, <laughs> oh, Because they do them. deep fry those things. Yeah. I have had them, yeah. I, have you, Kevin? Have you, you like No, I'm trying to cut down on it. Uh, well, how deep? Uh, I, I at least seven and a half feet. Seven and a half feet. Because the air and the front. grease. <laughs> yes. There's Go something on. really happens chemically there. That uh... I don't know if I came up with this or some other comic did. If you get a, a, a deep fish, you know, at, you know, what do they call them? Like a deep sea deep fish. Deep fish. Yeah. yeah. As a pet, do you have to get a really deep aquarium? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they can't live a, a any, marlin can't six live. feet. They, they won't live. Yeah. They'll die on you. That's a big yeah. backyard. It gets too. really dark. Right. Yeah. 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 They like the water pressure. It makes them feel. <laughs> yeah, you're right. There must be some like difference for them. Being hugged. <laughs> Yeah. I kind of ran out of just... <laughs> I wondered why you didn't want to finish. get tired? <laughs> I did get tired, and I, I, I was not Isn't committed. that just like was you, Was not Tom. committed to the myth. Yeah, yeah, yeah I like it. When people give up on a story, yeah. you know, they start saying, you know, I was, uh, this is the craziest thing. I was coming home from work yesterday, and I got to this traffic light. Oh, this is just too long. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> mm. huh. Well, that's when you get your Raycon earbuds out and listen to yeah. those. While yeah. You're, or maybe you make a phone call with your Raycon earbuds. Well, someone's can. in the car thinking, I want to catch up on the news. Let's see what Christy has. <laughs> oh, exactly. I only heard three stories. <laughs> Trust me, they know. This is how it works. You know Raycon's optimized gel tips, Willie? They fit every ear ever made. Did sure. you know that? And whether you're out walking the dog, running on the treadmill, stopped at a red light, using the chat on the phone, Raycon stay in your ears. And also, Raycons have eight hours of playtime, 32 hours of battery life. And don't worry about whether Raycons are up for the task. You can enjoy features like easy-to-use earbud tap functions, noise isolation, and the Raycon awareness mode. Go to buyraycon.com slash Tom today. Get 20% off your Raycon order plus free shipping. That's 20% off and free shipping at buyraycon.com slash Tom. That's buyraycon.com slash Tom. We'll be right back with news and... No, we have history and our guests. Kevin and Nealon. We're and done with news. I'm like out. I said, we'll be back <laughs> today in history and the things we learned on yeah. the show. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Add to or continue the conversation. Check out the Bob and Tom Show on Facebook. Get the link at bobandtom.com. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hey, it's Josh Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven-baked cheese. It arrives pre-baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skillet, or air fry it. Check out their new oven-baked cheese flavor, jalapeno. Ooey, gooey, spicy cheese. It's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat. Perfect for game day parties or any time. Excuse me, are, um, are you serious with this? I mean, why are you doing this? Me, uh, the real me is right here. I could easily be doing this. We, we don't need you, man. I, uh, look, there's only room for one of us. That's Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese Jalapeno Flavored Oven Baked Cheese. It's now available in Gardner's Oven Baked Bundle Package, so try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh, me the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you.
Hey, hi, I'm Tom, this is Chick, that's Josh, and this is Christy Lee. Christy, what's happening? Hey, Charleston, the Bob and Tom Show here and our friends at Rock 105 WKLC are bringing us to town for a live show with special guest. Duke Tomato and the Bob and Tom Brass to Mouth Horns. Plus, do not miss an amazing comedy show that night. That's right, it all happens Friday, April 5th at the Charleston Coliseum and Convention Center. If you're listening anywhere within 100 miles of Charleston or Deacon, Come out and see us live on the morning of April 5th. That's a free show. And then get tickets for that night's Bob and Tom Show comedy tour event with who, Christy? Pat Godwin, Josh Arnold, Jeff Oske, Willie Griswold. All hosted by Tom and Christy. Aww. Tickets on sale now and they're going fast. Get your tickets at Ticketmaster.com or the Charleston Coliseum box office. See, see you there! there. Uh, pair this of is the funniest oh, thing I've pair ever scissors, seen. Yeah. I have something new. Oh, you? check it out. That's a hat. <laughs> I know you like wearing hats, Bob. I love, I love wearing hats. Bob likes. Check this bitch out. <laughs> <laughs> this is from the uh, the greatest uh, racing race? oh, venue that's... in the world, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. I didn't know that they made a hat this big. This hat was actually <laughs> actually worn by A.J. Foyt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I was going to ask you to right? fit in it. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's a little bit, oh, a little bit me, big. Let me have that hat. This, uh, oh, big that's that's great. big as a laundry basket, isn't it? Uh, it really is. It's huge. It says one size fits <laughs> most. <laughs> You know, oh, I very wish I nice. had that hat when I was playing guitar on the street corners. Yeah. <laughs> this is, uh, now fill it up. Yeah, fill her up! The logo of the great Indianapolis Motor Speedway, of course, the that's home hilarious. of the Indy 500 coming up in the month of oh, May. Oh, that's just great. But that is a nice Look big at that. hat. Thank you. Yeah, that's you got a... You gotta work the brim there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Can you do you mind trying it on? Oh, I don't mind at all. Let me okay. get the, let me get the brim right. set first. Right. We need to get a picture of this on our oh, website. Okay. Right Bob, Bob is setting the brim, which he's very good. Uh, at. Yeah. The, well, this is kind of a <laughs> flexible brim That's, here. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Put it on. Okay. <laughs> there you go. That's it's all right. <laughs> hey, what's yeah. happening, cool cats? All right. Hey, coach, I'm ready to go in. <laughs> okay. We'll um. I'll you should wear a shot of that <laughs> for the website. Tip of the hat to you, Christy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you could actually wear that over a fireman's helmet. Yeah, you could. You should wear that all the time and, and, and say... And just say, what? Well, what, what are you looking at? <laughs> what happened? Yeah. Here, can I help you through the x-ray machine, Mr. Otta? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Yes. Comedian Bobcat Goldthwaite is here with us. I like goofy movies. I yeah. didn't see Phantom Menace or the uh, Attack of the Clones mm -hmm. because uh, I'm 40 years old and I've been <laughs> so, Star Wars, the Lord of the Rings, you know, none of that stuff, really. But, like a jerk, I went to the Star Wars re-release. Have any of you nerds ever seen a <laughs> Could you pick a out of a police lineup? If I had a and a donut and a mop, could you tell me the difference between these things? Because the day you actually see one, you're going to throw that stormtrooper cookie jar right out the window. You're going to go, what was I thinking about? I, go, I don't know. We've been trying to tell you about it for years. I got one of those, um, yeah. you know, the calls on the phone, the uh, guy selling you something or trying mm -hmm. to get donation right he actually used this word is this the man of the house <laughs> is this 1952 <laughs>
<laughs> yes, yeah. it is the man of us. I'm, I'm lounging on the divan with a highball. Why do you insist on calling during Edward R. Murrow? Uh -huh. I'm serious. Come on. So I'm yeah. looking at it. My wife said you learn a lot about yourself if you keep a diary. Mm -hmm. And that is so true. I've learned my life is brimming over with really boring activity. <laughs> <laughs> and now one more, writing in my diary. <laughs> Thanks, honey. Yeah. Are the stars out tonight? I don't care if it's cloudy or bright. Because I'm blind. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Hello, this is comedian John Evans, the High Plains thrifter. Oh, I have a height range Kinda five scare me. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Kevin, uh, Neilan, and Christy are going to go out here. No, Sorry. God, no, no. Oh, you just got married. That's I just right. got married. I'm yeah. not going out. Oh, I can't do go. that. It ruins dating when you get married. <laughs> I used to say that. Are you you're going to go out and host some comedy shows? And I go, yeah. And is your wife going with you? And I go, no. How am I going to get laid if she? Got <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Hey, Pat. Yeah. I heard that you have prepared something special for our guest, Kevin Nealon. Is that correct? I am a huge fan. Uh huh. Nealon. <laughs> Love that Kevin Nealon. <laughs> He gives us warm, fuzzy feelings whenever he's around. Oh, years ago, I worked with him in Sanibel, but he doesn't remember me well. Hey, he's worked with lots of folks. <laughs> Kevin Nealon, whoa, so whoa, funny whoa. Kevin Nealon. <laughs> I made no impression on him. <laughs> Granted, I was terrible years ago. <laughs> Everyone, Neilan, whoa, 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 Kevin Neilan, we love you, Kevin Neilan. Welcome to the Bob and Tom. He's not here. It's Chick Show. <laughs> Oh, that's so nice. I got, nice. You've got Kleenex. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Cheering up here. Man. You know, I, I remember where we worked, though. There you go. Yeah. Come. Because <laughs> he, I, he remembers the building. <laughs> <laughs> you were fantastic. You were great. No, I remember. You used the microphone, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> just the opening. But I ran into that guy uh, just John the other Biddle. day. Yeah, John Biddleman, who used to uh, own that club yeah. or ran the show or whatever. Out in Vegas? No, in Sanibel. Oh, in Sanibel, yeah. Yeah, oh. yeah. Oh, I did run into him in Vegas. Yeah, I saw him in <laughs> Vegas. That's where I saw him. <laughs> and that guy named Dr. Al also operated that. Uh, Dr. Al? Too. Yeah. Dr. Was he the guy that said everything backwards? He did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, that's way to bring things to a stop. Yeah, <laughs> I'm still looking for today in history. I gave it to you. Did you? Are you sure? Yes. Which one was it? Yeah. What day was, was it? it the today. <laughs> Joe DiMaggio died today. Uh, you know that? I will give it to no, He's been dead for a while. I don't want to say that. I don't want to leave it there, though. That's the only thing I have. <clears throat> Take a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> you know what that is, Kevin? Sounds like an alligator, maybe? That's a howler monkey. Ooh. And you know what this is? Ooh. <laughs> That's Tom. That's Tom Yawning. That's, uh, that's actually funny. him. Today in in history. In here her, you go. Oh, you almost said her story. Yeah. 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 Because it is International Women's Day. Oh, there you go. Today is? I, month, it was month. yesterday or today? It's well, there's month. actually a day, too, and no, then they've built a month around I thought it was only three to five days of the month. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> do, uh, do women like that joke? Oh, I love it. <laughs> That's funny. You want equal rights or not? Hey, on this date in 1930... Babe Ruth signs a two-year, $160,000 contract. Whoa, big dollars. The Yankees GM at the time predicted no one will ever be paid more than Ruth. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, and then we have Bryce Harper. What did he sign for? Uh, more. No, Shohei, Shohei Otani, $70 million a yeah. year or something. Crazy. But, you know, back then with Babe Ruth, 160000 was like 160000 today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It was really... <laughs> they say here that $160,000 is like what they're getting paid a game now for some of these big major league contracts. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. 1962, Pat. Guess what? Beatles something. Yeah, they debuted on TV with drummer Pete Best. Oh, what happened to him? 
No one knows. Yeah. You know, I had a car ride once, this driver, very old uh, Scottish guy, and I said, I asked him the same question. I said, who's your first uh, concert? And he thought about it for maybe half a minute. He goes, uh, the Beatles, actually, in the cavern. Whoa. Would you have to Whoa. think about that? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't an immediate answer. Yeah. That would be top of mind. 1973 on this date, Paul and Linda McCartney are fined for growing pot. Oh, um. Potheads, dopers, yeah. filthy, filthy hippies. On this date in 1993, <laughs> Beavis and Butthead premiered on MTV. Uh, on this date in 1996, uh, Fargo was released. And that's sad. That's We're not going to mention that. Great, yeah, it really is. Um, birthdays today. 1702. Hmm. This lady is a famous Irish pirate. Is that right? Oh, uh, Johnny Depp. <laughs> I believe that, 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 that is correct. That's a good guess. Yeah, that is correct. No, <laughs> Anne Bonny. Uh, on this date in 1970. Oh, she lies over the ocean. Yeah. Yeah, yeah my Bonny. Freddie Prince Jr. was born in 1976. Son of? Freddie Prince. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Josh, you know a lot of trivia, mm -hmm. dude. Yes. Wow. You are smart. On this date in 1982, Kat Von D. was born, the tattoo artist. And that's about the, all they gave me. So. Isn't she doing something now? Isn't she blacking out all of yeah, her tattoos? Yeah, she blacked all of her, most of her Whoa. tattoos out. So now she's just tattooed. And like so did just... Machine Gun Kelly. Have you seen him lately? I have not he seen him. He did the same she... thing. It's bizarre. That's crazy. Machine it's... Gun it's... Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> Time now for things we learned today. Brought to you by Hyundai. Uh, the all-new Hyundai 2024 Santa Fe. Equipped for adventure with capable features like available H-Track all-wheel drive and standard third row seating. We started with Iron Mike today because uh, Mike Tyson is going to be fighting uh, Jake Paul. Jake Paul here coming up. Uh, is going to stream live on Netflix sometime in, what did I say, July? July. July. That's wow. exactly right. Uh, I claim I can ride a bike and Josh claims he can ice skate, but very oddly. Yeah. We yeah. covered that earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, Giselle, Tom Brady's ex-wife, was crying we never uh, talked about why, did we? And we never talked about why, uh, but she Christy was... really was tickled. That so she happy. Tickled. Really happy at her pain. You no, seemed, you I seemed watched seemed the thrilled. interview. She was very sad. She said it was the death of a dream. And you said she deserved to... all of it or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what you get. Oh, yeah, that's what I said. Horror. <laughs> Horror, I think. It was, it was off the air. But you <laughs> I hate all of you. <laughs> Remember, what's our uh, blatant hostility? That's, what that's we how were... we've uh, yep. been alive so long. Yep. Uh, we talked about tumbleweeds and dirt devils. Well, Josh talked about dirt devils. I think it's a portable vacuum cleaner, but you say it's oh. both. It's you know what meaning. we missed yesterday on Today in History? What? The 41st anniversary of this program, the Bob and Tom Show. Is that, yeah, 41, though. 41. That's kind of odd. I was wondering what that parade was for downtown. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 At least somebody remembered. I don't know how this is not a bigger story, but Kansas City Chiefs fans, when they the ones who went to see the Dolphins, at Arrowhead when the air temperature was four below and the wind chill was 27 below, some of those Kansas City Chiefs fans are suffering from frostbite and they're being advised to amputate some of their extremities. That's rough. And I don't know how this is not a bigger story. Because how many, I mean, there were... I don't know. They're being, I can't find a number. But it was a lot. It was like was many. Yeah. A troubling amount. <laughs> yeah, just because they were outside. Well, there's only one extremity that really counts. <laughs> <laughs> well, for you guys. Yeah. For us guys. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. And for you gals. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Many of you gals yeah, enjoy it. I'd the, be kind uh, of upset. Yeah. <laughs> Christy still claims she's never seen her on an airplane. Uh, what? The state patrol. I have never seen that. Given a ticket no. as far as the I speeding see, I've goes. seen the signs, but I've never seen an actual airplane. And there are... Underground bunkers under the interstate system every 3.3 mm -hmm. 3 miles. Mm -hmm. where yeah, necessary. With, with what did you say, Willie? Sabaro. Sabaro. Yeah. yeah, right there by the underground bunker. Mm -hmm. So we can eat. we got to eat. Uh, have a good weekend. We'll be back Monday. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. Even though we're not too much to look at, you can also watch the show on our YouTube channel.